And good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us for a live tutorial and playthrough of Flow. As always with these live streams, let me know if you can hear me and you see me okay. Make sure everything is working fine. Pete's joining me this evening. Hello. And Rob as well. Hello. And just a few things before we get started. First of all, this game is not out yet. This game, as the time of recording this video, uh, which is Friday the 23rd of February, this is going on Kickstarter next week. So if you're interested in what you see here, the Kickstarter campaign for this, which there is a link to in the description of this video, is going live next Tuesday. So keep an eye on that. So this is a prototype copy of the game that they sent me. Um, with Also, with some recent updates, which I've printed off on my home printer this afternoon. So if you're looking at some of the components and thinking, that doesn't look very good quality, that looks like it's been printed on somebody's home inkjet printer. It has. Um, because... And this game has been covered by a couple of reviewers already, uh, and other content creators have copies of this game or review copies of this game. What you're going to see here today is a different, a slightly different version from what other people have covered on their channel. That's because I've been in contact with the playtest group and the designers, and they've sent me some updates. So I have spent today basically updating a few parts of the game. So yeah, what you see here today is going to be slightly different from what other people have shown. And as well as this physically being a prototype copy of the game, the rules that we're using today are the rules as they are at the moment. Now, if you know what the team that's behind this game have done in the past, is that they will continue to develop and refine this game and make it better uh, during the campaign and even after the campaign until it goes to print. So what you see here is hopefully going to give you a good idea of how the game plays, but nothing is final. So if you see anything today which jumps out at you and you think, oh, I really hate that mechanism, they might actually fix that because there's been, there's already been some updates. Um, yeah, certainly over the last over the last few weeks. Also, if you're interested, there is going to be a tabletop simulator mod for this game. Uh, Overboard Games have created it. And in fact, they've created and it's not quite finished yet, but there is going to be a tabletop simulator how to play video by Overboard Games which I will link to in the description of this video once that is up there. So if you do use Tabletop Simulator and you're interested in trying the game yourself, then yeah, you're going to be able to do so. What else have I got? Unlockable stuff, right. So one of the things about this game is what you're going to see here today is not the experience you're going to have when you first get the game. Because this is a game which is going to come with lots of extra bits and modules and things like that that you will unlock after you've played it a number of times. So what you're seeing here is probably the game after, I don't know, three or four games in. Because there's quite a lot going on. But it's also not everything. There is going to be more stuff mm. that unlocks later on. Down there, I've got a secret envelope, which they sent me, which has got stuff in it that I'm not allowed to show anybody. And it's like, well, why have they sent it to me? <laughs> it's just so that I know that there are extra stuff. Um, some of the extra stuff that unlocks is just additional cards but some of it is new rules. Mm. I don't know exactly what we're using tonight, which is going to be included in what would be game one. And I don't know whether they've decided or not, but basically, yeah, if you think tonight, you think, oh, whoa, there's a lot going on. Yeah, there is a lot going on in this, but as I say, this is not the first game. There's also going to be a cooperative mode that they told me about this afternoon. So again, for the full details of what's going to be included in the game, Check out the Kickstarter page next week when it goes live. But they have told me a little bit today about the cooperative mode, uh, which is also going to be a solo mode where there are big monsters that are appear on the map and you've got to fight them and stuff like that. Who knows? Who knows? Right. That's it for the introduction. So if we're all ready. Yep. Very. What are we trying to do in this game? Well, we're exploring this iceberg. Uh, we've got icebergs on this map here. These two map tiles have already been discovered. These two haven't been discovered yet. Um, we're going to be visiting the village where we can go and get warm because we all have warmth. Warmth is one of the currencies in the game and you will spend warmth when you travel around the map and you go back to the village to do village actions. And you warm up and then you go back out again. There's also a cave here. Uh, the cave currently is here. Other caves are available, but all caves lead to the same cave system. So every time you go in the cave, you're going to advance your figure through here. And it's, an, it's your own separate little mini game where you get to fight monsters and things like that. It's sort of a little sandboxy. There was a discussion going on on Board Game Geek earlier on this week where one of the designers has basically said, 
you don't need to do this. You can win the game without doing this. So yeah, there's lots of other things that you can do in the game. Ultimately, we're trying to get points. This little marker here means the game's going to end when we get to six points. So right. what happens is we have randomly chosen a start player at the start of the game. Benny the Beaver is the start player marker. This does not come with the game, by the way. This is mine. When somebody gets to six, we finish that round and we play one more round. And then we're going to reveal some end game scoring cards. So your final score is actually going to be above six, but six is the end of game trigger. Now, just to give you a bit of an idea and a shout out to Bill, who taught me how to play the game on Monday. Bill's one of the playtesters. He got to six. I was on one. We may be here a while tonight. <laughs> this may be what I'm saying is if we feel like, oh, this game's really slow. I've been playing for an hour and a half and I've got one point. It's just that we're not very good at it. Mm. <laughs> I'll get Bill to come mm. round and tell us, tell us all how we do it anyway. The symbol for victory points is that. That is the symbol for victory points, which you will see in a number of different places in the game. But this game currently has half victory points. The half victory point symbol is that. It's okay. a totally different symbol, right? Yeah. Whenever you gain half a victory point, you move this little marker up to there to indicate you've got half a victory point. And then when you gain another half a victory point, you move it down and you move that up. Okay. Now, again, that's not final. They might change that. They might get rid of the half victory points and, and just double this to 12 in the final version. I don't know, but that's what we're doing today. Um, right. On your turn, and I'm going to take the first turn in the game because I've got the start player marker. You either do a map turn where you are here because this is, this is the village here. So you're either here and you move around here and you explore and you discover things and do that or you go to the village they are your two choices now even if you do a map turn and you end up here on the next turn you can go to the village and then when you come out of the village you start here so it doesn't matter where you are on here you don't have to go back to the village now i'm not actually going to explain the village first and the reason for that is all of the things in the village cost you resources you currently don't have any resources okay let's just have a look at my player board and i'll show you quickly my player board here we go right so you have these five resource tracks you have pearls you have kelp you have bubbles you have mushrooms and you have wood these are the four normal resources this is a special resource and as the start player i don't have any bubbles but you two do it's actually bubbles trapped within sort of like a i won't say crystal because that's something else in this game but essentially what happens is you're going to be gathering these four resources and you're going to be moving this marker up. That indicates I've got one pearl. I'm only allowed to have one pearl at the moment because this glowstone is limiting how many I can have. But over the course of the game, you will be able to increase this. And once it gets to there, you'll notice that it has released, re revealed this symbol. This is a merit symbol. This is prestige. They're good things to get. If I get this to there, I've got two prestige symbols. But once I have this flowstone at the top of this track, then I can, when I'm doing a map turn, if I go past one of these spaces here, then I can drop off that into there. Now that immediately gets me a level up, which is what that icon is. But in addition to that, if we just have a look back at my player board, that has revealed that symbol. Now, I know those symbols are revealed, but basically, if there is a stone on it and you then take the stone off it, you gain a victory point. So it should all be down here as well. Yes, all of your markers should be should be on the on the second space, which limits how many you can have. The bubbles, you got a limit of a limit of six. Now, if you ever gain one of the four resources and you don't have room for it, you gain a bubble instead. And if you look down at the bottom of your player board, you will see that you can spend two bubbles for any one of the four resources. Yep. And you can also spend four bubbles for a crystal. We'll come on to crystals later on. But that's that's one way that you can get points is, is by doing that. And because you don't have any resources, and as I mentioned, you don't want to be going to the village at the start because, yeah, you need the resources to buy some stuff. The village is filled with these villagers. It's five main spaces and there's also a healer where you go if you're wounded you can go to the healer even if you're not wounded uh just to recover lots and lots of warmth 
Right, so let's talk about the map and what you do. If you decide to take a map turn, you start here, and then you may, if you want to, move around the board. Now, if you start in the village, you will have to move around the board because there is nothing to do in the village. But what I'm saying is, in future, if I was here on this iceberg, and I wanted to go in the cave, that would be my action, I could say I'm not moving. You don't have to move, it's optional. Um, and then after you have moved, you can then do an action. Now, moving consists of walking over the shallow water, which is the here. That will cost one warmth, and you can move as far as you want. So I could walk all the way down to here by spending one warmth to get to this iceberg and one warmth to get to this iceberg. Alternatively, you can get on a boat. If there is a boat at your island where you are, you can get on the boat, and the boat sails on these dark blue sea areas. And it will cost you one warmth per dark blue sea area that you cross, but you can only stop at a pier. And if you notice, these are stickers that I put on this board early on this afternoon because they've changed this tile. So I could, for example, spend one warmth to get on here. I could then sail, can't, can't stop here because there's no piers. I'd have to go into here for one warmth and I'd stop there and I would end up here. You can't, there is no piers to this island anymore. There used to be in the old version, but they've changed it. However, I could then walk to here. And in fact, this icon here means that if you move through this space or move onto this space during movement, you gain one warmth. So you can combine walking movement and sea movement as part of your movement. There's no real restrictions on how far you can move with the limit of your warmth. Okay, okay with the movement? Yep. One other thing, if you are on an iceberg and there is a pier and there's no boat, you can spend a bubble to buy a firework, launch the firework or the flare, and the boat comes here, and then you can get on the boat. That is a rules change that was added last week. So, right. Once you have done your movement, one of the actions you can do is you can explore, which is basically there is an exploration token on each of these icebergs. These are starting ones that were randomly placed at the start of the game. And essentially what you do is you just pick it up and you remove it from the game. And, and that's it. And some of these are simply just resources. So if you picked up that token, you would increase your wood by one and you would get rid of the token. This is a crate where you will take a crate token, which has got some random goodies on it. Uh, this is a map. We'll talk about maps later on as well. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, I think that's it. But if there is a boat adjacent to the iceberg you are on, so this isn't movement, this is your action, you can get on the boat, sail out a little bit and pick up one of the sea exploration tokens that's in a neighbouring sea. Yeah, as well as or instead of. No, instead of, but only if there's a boat there. If the boat wasn't there, I would be limited to that. So you basically take take the token and do what it says. This icon here, this is a dive. I'll come on to dives later on. Uh, this is kelp. So basically kelp and pearls are at sea uh, and the mushrooms and the wood are on land. Any questions about exploring? Is that going to cost me a warmth if I get onto the boat and go out and go diving? No, no, no. The, the, the warmth is for the movement. Okay. Yep. That was me just explaining it thematically. Right. Thematically, you get on the boat, sail out there, and go and get it and come back. But that doesn't cost any warmth. Right. Okay. What about these symbols? So these are the places where you drop the flow stones off once you've got it to the top. Okay, so but get, get it to the top first. It's not an action. Okay. And again, if you've watched any other people's videos and it, it was an action, it used to be. It's now not an action. So literally, while you're doing your movement, if you go through an iceberg that has that and you've got a stone at the top, you can drop it in there, get a level up, get the point and carry on with your with your turn. Okay. Right. Other things that you can do on the map is that you can discover a new region. We have four new regions and we have these discovery tokens. Uh, two of them are easy. Two of them are hard. They were randomly shuffled and they're two sided. Um, the hard ones are worth a point and the easy ones are worth half a point. Okay. But to do it, to do it, you need to be. So to discover this region, you need to be on a boat here right. in a dark blue sea zone adjacent to this. And then what you do is you spend what's printed on it. So if we just have a quick look at this token here, you need one green merit icon and a map. And that's what you need to discover it. And then basically what will happen is you will discover the tile, you'll flip it over, 
you'll get um, an iceberg encounter and you'll get half a point. I won't go through exactly what happens, but we flip it over and we populate it with new stuff. This one, there is a cave on, on here. You can see there's a cave on here. This one doesn't have a cave. This one does have a cave. So you already know that there are two caves over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we have to do we have to explore by sea to find You have to explore by sea. Here and go Correct. Across. Yeah, it has to be done by sea. Right. Landmarks. There's no landmark yet, but there are four landmarks in the game. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. Right. Once you have found a landmark, you can as an action, if you are on the iceberg with that landmark, you can interact with the landmark. We'll explain that more when we get one, but that is an action. Also, there are encounters on some of these tiles. You can have an encounter as an action as well. And the final action to explain is enter the cave. Now, I'll, enter the, I'll explain entering the cave briefly, but we'll go into it in a lot more detail when somebody does it. So we've got, um, I've got two presets for the cave. This is the start of the cave. We all start here. This is chamber one. We will fight that monster. Now, as long as you're not killed by the monster, well, not killed, but as long as you're not defeated by the monster, you will progress. If you manage to defeat the monster, you'll get all sorts of extra bonuses. But even if you don't defeat the monster, as long as you don't get knocked out, you will still move to the next one. OK, this is how much damage it takes. This is how much damage it deals. This is the reward that you get for defeating it along with that. And this is what you will get when you move from that chamber to the next chamber. There's all sorts of other things that happen in combat as well, but every monster that you fight has a special ability. So with that one, you can't use your familiars. Right. So is it just the first person that has to fight it? First person will fight that one, and then that will go and we'll get a new one. Ah. So everybody will have to do it. Now, when we progress to the third chamber, there is a cave card. So... You will choose. I've only got two of them, but there's going to be loads more included with the game. Uh, I don't know which one it's going to be, but essentially, when somebody gets to here, we'll reveal this card. It will have an immediate benefit, and there will be an, a latter benefit as well, which you will get, or you could choose to take if you get all the way to the end. If you get all the way to the end, you can choose one of those four bonuses, and that one is tied to that. Combat involves rolling dice. The number of dice you get at the start of the game is two. And as you one, one thing you can do when you can level up is you can increase the number of dice that you get in combat. But as I say, as long as that um, monster doesn't defeat you and send you back to the healer, you can decide to, to move on. So in other words, a turn one move could be, I'm going to go in the cave. I know I'm not going to kill the monster, but I'm going to progress and I get through to the next chamber. And you might, you might be happy with that. Okay. Right. So there are all of the different things that you can do here briefly without mentioning encounters or landmarks let's have a look at the village so when you go to the village you first of all you choose which of the areas you want to go to if you want to go to this area this is the healer this is very simple you get full warmth or you get two warmth and a potion but that's it that's that's all it does and in fact if you're defeated by a monster you immediately move there and you immediately perform that healing action if you want to go to any one of the other spaces Two things happen. The first thing is, and let's just say that was there, for example, you gain one warmth per villager that's at that location, and then you move the villagers clockwise around the board. So if there's one of them, it moves to the next space. If there's two of them, one of them moves to there, and the next one moves to there. If there's three of them, one moves to there, then one moves to there, one moves to there. It's like the Mancala system, if you know what that is. Yeah. But that's the first thing that happens. So you gain warmth based on the villagers that's there. And then you perform the action of that location. So all of these four locations work in the same way in that you must spend all of your resources of the type that it wants. So this one is you must spend all of your pearls yeah. and not just spend all of them. You have to be at your maximum amount that you can have. So if we just look at my player board right now, I'm only allowed to have one pearl. So if I had one pearl, I could buy an item from the shop. And it would cost me that one pearl. But the effect of buying an item from the shop is that that goes up by one. So the next time I buy items, it's going to cost me two pearls. And then when I buy my, my second item, it costs me my two pearls, that goes up by one. 
My next item is going to cost me three pearls. So it's essentially every one of these four areas, the cost of doing the action gets higher the more times you've done it. The action is no more powerful, it just costs you more yeah, to do it. Of course, it's also unlocking these abilities. It is unlocking those abilities as right. well. Yeah. Right. So let's briefly go through what these do. So this is the shop. You buy an item and you increase your tracker of pearls by one. There are three items visible. You buy any of them. And what you do is you take it and you just put it next to your player board and it has an ability printed on it. Now the items, and I'm just going to take this one. I'm just going to show you this in detail here. So this is the item, the net of holding. It basically means whenever you dive, you get an extra resource, which thematically makes sense. But have a look in the top left. As soon as you have that requirement, so in this one, two prestige merit icons, you can flip it over. And it's now a plus one net of holding. It's better. Okay, it's basically it's got an ability at the bottom and you can actually see what that ability would be because it's shaded out at the right. bottom of the card. And that is an ability in combat because that is to do with the dice. Okay, so all of the items work in the same way. They start off on the blue side and you can upgrade them. If you buy one of those two, we replenish so that there's always three visible. Yep. And items are permanent. You don't lose them. Right, this one is the tavern. So if you decide to visit uh, the tavern, there's two cards visible. You choose one of the two benefits printed at the bottom, and you get that immediately, and you unlock one of the tokens from your player board, and then the card that you choose goes to the bottom of the stack. So those cards you do not keep, you just resolve the effects of them, and then the card goes to the bottom. So if we have a look at my player board, You've got four of your own coloured cubes here. So when I say unlock one, you take it from there and you put it there. Now I can have five warmth maximum instead of four. So every time you go to the tavern, or the first four times you go to the tavern in the game, you're going to move a cube from there to there. Okay. And that will allow you to have, have more warmth effectively. Cubes being here, do anything? Yes, your cubes here are for the landmarks. So quick note. When a landmark comes out, you can't go to it and visit it unless you've already been to the tavern once. Right, what else have we got in the village? We have here. So if you go here, you can pick up an ally who has a quest. That's what the feather is for. You can only have one ally at any time, but you take the card, you put it in front of you, you put the feather on the first position, and you immediately get the benefit of that first position, which is a, a secret quest, a secret goal. And then whenever you do the thing that's in the next box, you get the bonus above it. Mm. So again, I will just take one of these cards and I'll just show you on this camera. So as soon as you take uh, Captain Safarth, you'll put the feather on here and you will get a secret goal. Then whenever I get on a boat, I'll get a map. And then I think that's whenever I play a flowstone. I'll check the iconography in a minute. You get that. And then whenever I do one of those two encounters, I get half a victory point. I think the bottom, uh, I think the last effect on all of them is always half a victory point. Right, I'm just going to check that iconography while I'm here, because I've not seen that card before. Um, unless the designer wants to tell me what that icon is. <laughs> it is... Yeah, no, it's not. It's not in the icon reference at the back of the back of the sheet. So... Yeah, if somebody can tell me what that icon was on Captain Safe Safe Bar, that would be great. We'll, we'll we'll get back to that later on. Right, Captain, Captain, Captain. Yes. Right. The last action to explain, not quite the last action to explain in the village, but you go here to build. This is the carpenter or whatever the builder, and you get to build one combination of buildings. So we've got tops and bottoms of buildings, and you buy a set, and it just goes here. The more of these you've got, the better. For your familiar action, which I haven't explained yet, but I will get to soon. Um, in fact, let's explain the familiar action now. So once you have done your turn, you get to use your familiar. Now, at the start of the game, before we started streaming, we all chose um, a hero to play and a familiar in reverse player order. But the familiars are not associated with the heroes. So you can play any hero with any familiar combination. 
and it's clip on bases so that you basically put your own color on. So if you've taken a map turn, then your familiar can do something on the map. If you've taken a village turn, your familiar can do something in the village. I'll come back to the map a bit later on, but I am going to explain what happens. Um, oh, it's an instant flowstone activation. Right. OK. So if you place your familiar in the village to do a village action, I'm going to have to scroll down a bit here. These are these are my starting buildings. OK. Um, I can either put it on the top and I will get a level up and a bubble. If I put it on the bottom, I get to do another village action with my hero which means moving to another location, getting warmth, moving the villagers around, and literally having an extra go. Now, can you just pass me two buildings? Let's say I've built these as well. All right, so from now on, if I was to choose that, I would get all of this. And if I was to choose that, I would get all of this. Now, one quick note, if you stay in the village on two consecutive turns, you can't do the same thing twice. So you would have to, you'd have to do that. Um, so just want me to level yeah. up. We've not covered leveling up yet. That's fine. Yeah, there's all sorts of different options. So the more buildings you've got, the more, the more the more bonuses you get when your familiar performs an action. Now I do I do have a rules question for those people uh, watching. Does it cost a warmth? I don't think it does. I don't think it costs a warmth for you to do a familiar action in the village. I don't think it does. Right, let's cover, what am I doing? Putting those back, there you go. It doesn't cost a warmth, I didn't think it did. So yeah, it does not cost a warmth for you to use your familiar on a village action. Right, the one action or the one place left in the village to explain is this here. Now, please bear in mind, this is the wrong icon. This is gonna be changed because that icon looks very similar to that icon and it does a slightly different thing. So this is the academy. There are three things that you can do at the academy. You can do each of these once whenever you visit. And they cost crystals. None of us have any crystals yet, but you can get crystals mainly from the caves. So you can spend one crystal to level up. We'll be leveling up in a minute. You can spend however many crystals it would cost you to do the village action. So if doing this action would cost you two wood, then it would cost you two crystals. The difference between that action and the one on the bottom of the building is you don't move your hero to the space. You literally just perform the action. And that is you then rank up the same track as what you've just spent. So it's essentially doing this, but by spending crystals instead. Okay. Three crystals is half a victory point, just to give you an idea of how valuable uh, crystals are. Right, that's the village. Okay. And we've covered the familiar in the village. Let's go back to the map and let's talk about what the familiar can do on the map. But before I do that, if you go in the cave, your familiar goes with you in the cave. And then even if you don't use your familiar in combat, you cannot then use your familiar to do an action outside. But if you don't go in a cave, then your familiar can do all sorts of things outside. First of all, he can go exploring for you. So if you're on an iceberg, you can put the familiar on any of these dashed spaces that's adjacent to the iceberg where you are. And then it can take an exploration token from anything that it is next to. So it could take this one. It could take this one. It could take that one. It could not take that one. That costs you one warmth. And you can see that it costs one warmth because it's printed here. So if you were to place your familiar in one of the spaces on the board, it costs you one warmth. That's what that is. This down here, by the way, is when you use the familiar in combat. It costs you one warmth and it does what's printed there. But we'll get onto that later on. There's a question in the chat from Mark. Does the academy net you heat? It only does if there's a villager there. So if there was no villagers there and you decided to go to the academy to do all of that stuff, you wouldn't get any heat. But if there was three villages there, you would gain three heat by going to the academy. So the heat that you get in the village, except for the healer, is based on the number of villages that are there. Right. What else can the familiar do? I think that's all the familiar can do. Yeah. Doxy. Yeah. I think that's all the familiar can do as it's action there. So your turn is 
hero action, which is either on the map or the village, followed by your familiar action, which is either on the map or in the village. And it's got to be the same as same as what you did. Ah, right, they're saying, right, does the academy net you the heat for doing the action? No, it doesn't. So if you go to the academy and you say, I'm going to do the action of here, you're literally just doing the action. You, you don't get the heat for the villagers that are there. That's what the question was. I now understand it. Right. There's a few other things we need to explain. Let's talk about levelling up. So when you level up, you have three options. The first option is really easy. You move that cube to there. That means you'll get more dice in combat. Mm -hmm. The second option is you can actually level up your familiar, which can only be done once in the game. What you do is you flip it over. It now doesn't cost any heat to use on the map. So that can only be done once. And then the last thing to mention is the set of four hero cards. So at the start of the game, just before we, we started the stream, uh, we have a choice of two different roles. So I had a choice of being an explorer or a tavern tipper. I chose to become a tavern tipper. Uh, and there are actually two cards and the double sided. So this is, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So when you level up, you change your number one card to number two. What happens, you can see here, this is shaded out. So it's telling you what I'm going to get when I get to level two. So when I get to a level two tavern tipper, I gain this. When I get to level three, um, the ability has improved. And when you get to level four, you get half a victory point. So the difference between level one and level two is the shield icon. Level two and level three is the ability. Level three and level four is half a victory point. So they are your three options for levelling up. Mm -hmm. um, other things that I briefly mentioned, which I'll now cover, dive. So whenever you get the opportunity to dive, which is this icon here, this is the current dive track. These five tokens were placed randomly at the start of the game. You can have that one for free. You can have that one or that one for one heat. You can have that one for two heat. You can't have that one. It's too far away. Let's say you take this one. That's two bubbles. You do that. That's it. That's that's the dive action. But basically, it's another way of getting various things. You'll notice on here, we have chests and we have keys. So what do chests and keys do? Well, if we have a look at our player board, as well as tracking your half victory points on the right hand side, you also track, do I have a key or not? And do I have a chest or not? As soon as you've got a chest and a key, you can combine them together to open the chest and get a magical artifact. These are one use only, mm -hmm. but they're really powerful. So we'll, we'll get to them when, okay. when, we, get when, when we get to them. Yeah. Oh, cool. There are also crates. When you get a crate, you get a crate token. You can immediately take what's inside the crate, or you can keep it as a crate and take it later. For example, you might find a mushroom and you might already be at max mushrooms. So in that case, you keep it inside a crate. Okay. Uh, potions are used in combat. Each of us starts with a potion. That might be everything. Right. I think. I think. I think there's probably enough without going into the cave in more detail, yeah. which we'll we'll go into later. No, it's kill monsters and get loot. Uh, yes, but the combat system is dice, dice mitigation, all sorts of things. Yeah. Everything is summarised on this cave battle sequence, which is really good. Um, but let's make a start. If we're ready, if we're ready to start. Yep. Let's so go. I am not going to take a village action because there's no point. Um, so I'm going to. Go to the map. Um, and I don't really know what I want to do. So let's just spend one warmth to walk to here. And then I will stop my movement. And I will just explore. And I've found some wood. So I remove that token from the game. And I gain one wood. And then I get to do my familiar action. Now, because I haven't leveled up my familiar... It's going to cost me one warmth, so I spend one warmth. I'm going to place my familiar. Um, so there isn't a thing there. So it's going to have to be one of the... Oh, you could also take that instead. So instead of taking a neighbouring resource, you can just get that, which is a bubble. So there's always bubbles available. There's always there's bubbles available. Okay. Um, I'm going to go there. And I'm going to take this. So I remove that from the game. And I gain a crate. I think there's a limit on how many crates you can have, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. 
So that is either a mushroom or a wood, but I'm actually just going to keep it for now as a crate. Does it cost you a warmth for your familiar? Uh, it does, because it's not levelled up. Right. So it was one warmth for me to move oh, there. So that's why you've spent two. That's why I've spent two. Okay. Um, you can, if you're on zero warmth, you do not have to go back to the village. You can stay where you are and do an action. But as soon as you would require warmth, you can't, you can't spend it. And if you're in combat with the monster, the damage that it deals to you is warmth. And if you go below zero, that's when you're defeated and you get put back. So what I'm saying is don't think because you're on zero that you have to go back to the village. There are certain situations where you don't have to. Six crates is the is the limit. Okay, right, right. Rob, okay. So I shall also go to the map. Mm-hmm. I'm actually going to stay where I am. Okay. Because I'm going to use this boat. So you don't stay where... You... Oh, right. Okay, I see. up this. Right. So you're staying in the village. Yep. But then you're going to explore, use that boat to pop out and get the kelp. It doesn't actually cost me any heat. doesn't cost you any heat. Anywhere. Yep. So I get myself one kelp. Get you some kelp. And then I will spend the heat to bring on... Jomi. Jomi, touched by magic, who will come on here. Yep. And take this map. Map. So we've not mentioned maps. These are the map tokens. They're all the same. Yep. There's a map. Maps are useful for two things. First of all, discovering these regions will cost you maps. But if you ever get four maps, they actually form a circle. Mm -hmm. And that is a circle where you can place one of your flowstones that's reached the top. It's almost the same as this. You don't get the level up, but you do get to put the flowstone mm -hmm. on it. Okay. We also haven't mentioned the secret goals, but that's because nobody's got one yet. So when somebody gets a secret goal, we'll talk about those. Um, I also will stay on the island. All right. And, okay. um, the, the boat, see, Rob's just uh, gone off in one. I'm going to take the other one. Yeah. And I'm going to go and um, explore here. Okay, so I do have a question for the designers, because, again, this is a slightly new map. Even though this boat is here and this boat is here, separated by shallow waters, uh, can Pete still take this with this boat? Is he is he allowed to do that? We'll get an answer for that while we're answering Graham's question. Are the familiars different? Yes, they are. Each familiar has a special ability at the bottom, and they are all slightly different. Okay. So we'll say yes until we get an answer in the chat that says no. <laughs> so you can have a pearl. If you can't have the pearl, would you just take that instead? Yeah. Right, okay. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. I'll take the kelp. Well, no, no, no. no, well, no. I'll take the kelp. No, that's just... That's well, good. Rob's already taken the kelp. You want to do something different? No, I'll take, I'll take the kelp. And then I'll tell my familiar to take the, the... Can the familiar take the pearl? Yeah, yeah because it's adjacent. Okay. So you're yeah. you're going to get the kelp. Yeah. And then you're going to spend one warmth. Yeah. You haven't got an answer yet. Place your familiar here. Can you get the pearl? You and the, the yeah. familiar can get the pearl. There's the eject, any yeah. locations any, anything you yeah, yeah. to it. I'll do that. And you get the pull. There you go. Everything but the pull. Right. So it's my go. So I could I could carry on. Yeah. Oh, okay, you cannot pick up the pull token. It has to be on the same sea as the boat. Right, yeah. okay. Thematically I thought I thought it would be that. But as it is, I can't take that pull. You could not have taken that pearl with this boat. I can take it with the familiar. But you can take it with the familiar. Okay. Yeah. Because the familiar just goes out and comes out with this magic. Um, okay, I'm I'm not going to go back to the village. I was thinking about it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to spend one warmth, and I'm going to travel down here. And then as my exploration, I'm not going to go in the cave. I'm going to pick up this mushroom. There you go. And then I'm going to spend another warmth, take my familiar and put it here. And the familiar is going to go on a dive. Cool. So we have a look at the dive track. And I'm going to take this one. So I've gained a chest. And then that goes to the bottom. And everything slides up. Okay. okay. And that's my go done, I think. Should go good. So I'll spend the heat to walk across this ice flow to here. Yep. Yeah. And that shall take me some wood. Yep. Yeah. And then I'll spend another heat, my familiar to reposition, and I think I'll move him to here and take another, another map. map. 
There you go. I have a second map tile. Thank you very much. So you can now explore this. Because it needs either two brown or a map. Yeah, and a map. map. Yeah, exactly right. Pete. Well. I'm really glad, actually, on the overhead camera, you can't see how badly this is printed out. <laughs> so this map tile here is the one that I printed out this afternoon. It looks fine. And it looks fine on the camera, yeah. but in real life, it, it doesn't look that it's good. Stop fishing for compliments. Well, I, I, I actually painted it because the yeah. Anyway, Here we go. I've yeah. spent a lot of time trying to get it to look right. So if I jump on that boat. Yes. Um, you can't can stop here way. because there's no pier. No, but I can head that way. You can. So um, jumping on the boat doesn't cost a heat, nope. but the first ocean costs you one heat. Costs you one to get to here. Okay. One in total? Yeah. I'll do Because you've that. only gone from one blue sea to another. So okay. You've moved one effectively. So that the fact that there's a little kind of turquoisey bit there. There? Yes. Yeah, so that's what's dividing that and this. So you've gone you've moved one. Okay. And so that cuts so I've moved one. I've gone from one deep blue sea to another, to another deep, deep blue sea, sea. So that's cost you one heat that cost me one heat yeah. okay so that's my one heat spent mm -hmm. i'll jump off so you gain a heat i'll gain a heat you're the one with the big ears aren't you? i'm the one with the double big ears by double the way big ears, yeah so you've gained the heat now your your movement can carry on i can hear in all directions at once you could now <laughs> you could now walk no i will stop there okay um i will grab a crate yep yeah. that just gives me one of these just one of those has it got anything on oh it's so I can either keep it as a crate or you can open it and I'll keep it as a crate. Yep. And then my familiar, um, this, 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 this one, one. will, um, will go there into that. that yeah, little... I can't go there because that's adjacent to that. Oh, no. yeah. Afraid. I'm afraid somebody's already on the spot. Oh, so if I wanted to do something with my familiar, I was, I you would have had to have docked here. And got off here. Oh, I see. As you could have done. You just wouldn't have got the heat, and you wouldn't have got that crate. You'd have got that instead. Right. Okay. Well, I've I've turned over a tile now, so let's just. Yeah, but stick you didn't know that. the rules, so. Well. It's up to you. You can do that next time. I'll do that next time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so you can't move your familiar because there is nowhere. There's no space for that familiar to go here. So he's just going to sit there and yeah, shiver. Yeah. Just doesn't do anything. Okay. All right. That's my go then. Right, mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to the village um, because I've got plenty of resources now. I've got things to do and I don't have much in the way of heat. So, um, I don't know which one I want to do first. Just a quick note, your starting bottom building has a merit icon on it already. So just so you know, you've already got... Yeah, that's just you've a, already per got. Permanent a permanent like one. Merit icon. You've got it. So... Uh, if I go there, then that will be there because I'm thinking about what Rob might do next. So I'm actually going to go here first. So I'm going to go here. There's one villager there, so I gain one warmth. And then that villager moves to here. And now what I'm going to do is my maximum capacity of wood is one. So I spend all of that. That goes up by one. And can I have... Uh, oh. Oh. Um... Yeah, let's have this one. We have those two, please. So then, what we do is we refresh. There's always three. So those go. Those go there. Uh, that's my action, and then my familiar. Come here, Yuma. Um, I am going to do this. So I get to do another. Village action. I'm going to move to there, gain a warmth. That moves on. I'm going to spend all of my mushrooms, which is one mushroom, and I am going to take. Um, I'm going to take that one. Okay. That's key thrust. Yeah. So that is an ally quest. The feather goes on there. Secret goals. So there's a big deck of secret goals. Whenever you get one of them, you actually draw the top two cards off the deck, choose one to keep, and put the other on the bottom. You can have a maximum of four of them. But if you've got four and you gain another one, you draw two, add them to your hand, and then discard down to four. Now, these have all been changed. 
I'm actually going to show you these on the big screen just to show you what they are, but they have been changed. So each one has two conditions. It used to be that the top condition was worth one point and the bottom one was worth half a point. They're now all worth half a point. So on the top, ignore the one point. It's actually half a point. And basically, at the end of the game, you reveal these to see if you've met the condition. And if you do, you get the points. Gotcha. If you're not clear on what they so do... That's how you get beyond... Yeah, just, just ask. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to take that one and put that to the bottom. Okay. Does, does the boat Pete took then would return back? Oh, yeah, the boat should be there. That's that should end. So that it stays where it is, and there's some Stay where it is. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also gain a wood for that. So that's it. I went to the village. I did that action. Yep. Then I used my familiar there to do another action and got that. So that's me done. Cool, cool. So I shall go to the village, and I'm going to drop down here. Okay, so you so, gain one heat. So we gain myself warmth. one yep. warmth. That villager then moves on. Yep. And you go into the tavern. Yep. So it costs I, you all of your kelp. I pay all my kelp. Yep. Choose either one of those two cards. Yep. So that's, is that start another one of these? It is move your feather along. So if I haven't already got the card, it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But you could choose that option. Which gets me a mushroom. Oh, because it's either or. It's either or. Mushroom and another heat, which would then. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. I'm going to take this one. Yep. So. This moves to here. Yep. And then I'll take this option, which gets me a mushroom. Mushroom and one warmth. And one warmth. And then that card goes face down on the bottom of the stack. So that if we ever go through the stack and get to it, we don't that's know. our indication we've been through the deck and we then reshuffle. Okay. And you're familiar. You I'm can familiar. either do that and this doesn't or that. Cost any it doesn't cost any warmth. Yeah. Yes. Did Paul cool. increase his mushroom capacity? He did not. Thank you, Matt. I did not. Oh, and then I increase my... Capacity. Yes. Yes. Boom, boom. So, yes, I will move my familiar. Uh, where is he gone? There he is. Get it over here. So, <laughs> I'm going to drop him here. Yep. Which lets me move. You basically way. get to do another village action. Yep. I'll jump to here. Which you gain one warmth. One warmth. And you can build something. Yep. Because I've got. That's so what I spend. Yep. Spend all of your wood. Your wood goes up by one, and you can have any one of those right. three things. So we've got two of these which I'll exchange a bubble for any one resource. Because normally resource. the exchange rate is two for one. Yep. And it's just this one is gain a bubble and a the, prestige icon. Yeah. Constantly either a yellow or so I've already got a green prestige. Um so I will take Green one was what were the names of them? Yellow was prestige. Brown was craftsmanship. I think green was courage. They are they do have names. I don't get to do this because it was... I think you do. Yeah, I think you do, actually. I think that, that that's a question occurred to me when I played on um, Monday. If I build a building while activating the buildings, do I get to do it? And I think the answer was yes. So you gain a bubble. Okay, so that does... So even though... Even though you've just on... built it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So whole... Ready's focus, that's it. Ready's focus. Uh, Buddy is asking, are the maps random? So this is always here. This is always here. These are shuffled. So these four map tiles are randomly placed. And these uh, discovery tokens or whatever they're called, they're randomly placed Just as well. Check. This means at any time, spend two of these to move one of these. Two options. bubbles for a resource. Yes. Gotcha. Brilliant. And I think you can do that uh, if while you're spending them. Yeah. Okay. Super, super. Thank you. All done. Hey. I can sail over to the other side of the board. So this this doesn't cost any warmth? There's a question. Does, does it cost any warmth to sail from there to there? Because you're not actually... Cross it. I'm not, I'm not you, going from not, one dark blue to another dark blue. You're not blue. going from one dark blue to another one. So mm. we'll find out. So I land there. You land there. I grab a mushroom. Have a mushroom. And then um, I'm going to throw my little um, thingy in to go to some deep sea diving. So here. Yep. And you can either dive or dive. Uh, I'm, I'm going to choose to <laughs> dive, I think. But are you going to take this token? Yeah. So that costs you a warmth. Okay. Right. Which of these would you like? Oh, top one. So you get two bubbles. Yep. 
So yeah, we're just waiting on finding out if it cost any warmth to go from this pier to that pier. As I said, they changed this map layout last week. So I'm using a very different one from um, what it originally was. We will get an answer to that hopefully soon in the chat. And then it's my go. So, um, okay, it doesn't cost any warmth since you stayed at the same sea. There you go. So it is one warmth per sea that you Because you're, you're on a boat. Oh, it's okay. a shore. When you, say, when you came back to the village, did you have to spend no, no, warmth no. to travel? No. You just banked just back. Yeah, okay. the, the village is nice and warm. So. Okay. Um, so I kind of wanted to stay in the village again. But unfortunately, I have. No, I can't. I absolutely can. So I'm going to. Ooh. It's a little inefficient. So I've got a crate. In the crate is a piece of wood. That would give me two pieces of wood. That would allow me to build another building. But because my familiar is already on the bottom, I'd have to move it to the top. And... Um, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm staying in the village. It's not great, is it? warmth wise so i go here there's no other villagers there you're here but you're yeah. not very warm no so um <laughs> very hurt people sorry um so i'm going to trade in this crate or a wood i have two wood i spend the two wood that goes to there uh can i have um well i need can i have the one on the far right you okay yep yeah, sorry there you go Okay, and then because my familiar was on the bottom, I can't stay on the bottom, I'm going to move to the top. So I gain a bubble, but I'm immediately going to spend that bubble to gain a crystal, and I also get a level up. So my level up is actually going to be three dice. Okay. And that, I believe, is my go done. Okay, so I'm staying in the village as well. I'm going to jump to here. So you gain one warmth. One more. Villager moves along. Bing, bada, boom. Then spend spend all of your mushrooms. Increase them. your mushrooms. One and take an ally. I shall take a peach the posh. Peach the posh. Peach the posh. Who will? So just pop that there. So draw draw two of those. Pick one. Pick one. If you're not sure what it does, feel free to ask. So I found a chest. What does the find hammer out? symbol mean? The hammer symbol is that. So I think that is how many buildings that you have constructed during the game. Gotcha. Not including your starting one. Okay, Pete. No, familiar. Oh yes, no, familiar. familiar can go to the top. He jumps to the top, so, so I level one. I'm going to level, level up for familiar. You're going to level up your familiar, okay? Yeah. And you gain a bubble. And I gain a bubble. And then you can, if you want to, spend a bubble for I'll a spend a bubble result. to move one of these up. Yeah. I'll then spend two more bubbles, to move it up again. Nice. Very nice. Right, Pete. So, um, can I come back to the village? You um, can. Can I go here? You can. So you gain one warmth. Okay. That. <laughs> warm village. Everybody's at the academy. And um, now I don't have any wood, Oh, but I do have bubbles. Okay, so you can spend two bubbles as if it was a wood. Oh, two bubbles to be one wood. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then spend you spend the wood to build and you increase your wood flowstone. No, not that one. The... Oh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So increase that one and then grab one of these two buildings. Yeah. Um, let's take this one. Okay, and then you can place your familiar either on the or the bottom building um uh, well let's uh let's go to the top one okay so you Where gain a level up yeah which can either be number of dice your familiar or you can improve your hero card i think um number of dice it's looking good and um and then i get to do this as well and you gain a bubble Gain the bubble. Yeah. Yep. And then if you want to, you can spend that bubble for two potions. I'll do that. Two okay. potions. Yeah, just take two potions. Two. Yep. And I think, I think there's a good. maximum capacity of six potions. I think that's my go. Right. Well, I've only got two warmth. 
but I kind of don't want to really stay. I've got one crystal, so I mean, I could go here, stock up on warmth, spend that crystal to level up. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I mean, there's not much to do here. How am I doing with uh, with merit icons? I've got a brown one, and I've got a red one, and I've got a yellow one. I don't have any maps, though. <laughs> so, yeah, there isn't actually that much to do. So, and there's no... Ah, that's interesting. There's no pier. There used to be a pier here. It's gone. Somebody's moved it. Um... And I don't have any bubbles to call this. I think we might go in the cave. I mean, it's a little risky. In fact, it's very risky. Because I've only got two warmth and it's going to cost me... Oh, it's going to cost me two warmth to get there. So, I'm going to have a bit of a weird sort of a nothing turn. Well, no, it's not a nothing turn. But I'm, going to, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to the healer. Okay. So, I get two warmth and a potion. Mm-hmm. And my familiar then goes to the bottom. Yep. So I can't do that because I don't have any resources, but I do get a wood and a bubble. So a wood and a bubble. But yeah, I don't get any resources. So that's me. Okay. That's me done. You have to take these in order. Um, could you just no, take... no. I... I believe you can do them in, in, in whatever order you want. Okay. I'm going to jump to here. You're going to the tavern? Yep, because I'm going to, I'm loading up on noodles. Oh, okay, yep. Yep, so I can because I have two of these. Yep, so and all of them. That goes that. that. I get one of these. You unlock. Oh yes, that's the that, that was the there. important part, doing that part. And then it's either a heat and a wood, a heat and a potion, a crystal, or a chest. Yeah. I think I will take the heat and the potion. Okay. So that goes up and a potion, please. Yeah, potion. Thank you. Super super. And your familiar? And my familiar, well, you may as well drop down to the bottom. Yep. Now, I don't have enough to do enough to do any of them because I'm sort of I haven't got mm -hmm. that, but I do gain a bubble from that one there. Yeah. Do have a rules question though, again, for the designers. Would the familiar use any building? Can you use the healer? I don't think you can, but if you can, then I'll do that. Then you'd do that. Get another potion. Then yeah. you'd get. You'd basically get a potion. So yeah. No, you can't. There we are. Overboard yeah. games have said you can't. Right. Nice. Okay. The so the familiar action that has to be one of the five active ones, not the not not the heat charge. Heat. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you're done then. Yep. Okay. Um, well, I've heard it's good over here with all my ears, <laughs> and I'm going to spend some kelp. All of your kelp. All of my kelp. So you increase that, that price, and which, and you unlock one of your cubes. This. Yep. So I do that. And yep. Which of those tavern guests do you want to sit and have a drink with? And just remind me what these what this does. So take so take, you get either yeah. of the benefits. Take a break, it or take a wooden one heat, or do a dive, or take a pearl and a heat. Okay. I can take this one. Okay. And I put this one. So you take you, you, do, you just take what's on it, yeah, and then you so put it to the bottom of the deck. Wood and heat. Yep, and then, and then it goes to the deck. Yep. On the deck. Boom. And that's my go. Oh, my familiar. Yeah. Goes down really here. Up to, oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Because always take. So familiar goes down here. So and I, I do. can take the bubble. Yep. But I can also do this because uh, I've now got a wood, so I can do this. Well, you need you need two wood to do that. So you spend the two bubbles to push a wood up again. If you want to do, yeah. I need two wood. It, it you costs you all of your wood and you have to have the maximum. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I'll spend another two bubbles to give myself another wood. Yeah, and then spend, and two, spend wood two wood to do another build. To do another build. And I'll grab another um, another one of these. And then you're done. Hmm. My, my, right. My grace up here. You switch, yeah, just uh, otherwise you're crashing into that. Um, to the cave? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't want to spend any more time in the village because I don't really have anything. But and there's there's not really much else here. But 
and my my ally wants me to find a crate and explore a cave and then explore the cave but i need to find a crate before i explore the cave now fortunately all the crates have gone and looking at the board i think you've got the monopoly because you've got the two they've got the maps yeah so you can do all of these discoveries i don't think i can do any of them i mean i don't have any maps so yeah it's tricky it's very tricky tricksy little hobbits yeah and I'm I'm thinking, oh, do yes. I want to... Yes, you then also get out of the bubble. Oh, mm. buy that building. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. I'm thinking, do I want to just come down here and try and get a map so that at least I can do some exploring? Because if I was to go one, two... But it's three warmth. It's expensive, isn't it? It's really expensive. Let's go in the cave. Should that okay. boat have come back to the village? Nope. It stays there. It stays there until somebody calls it to there. Oh, I see. Yes, we've got a fire of flare. One, yeah. one bubble is a flare. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go in the cave. So I'm taking a map turn. I'm going to go one, two. So it costs me two warmth to get there. And I'm going to choose to go in the cave. So okay. let's That's go fine. into the cave. Um, we're already in the first chamber. So we, we fight the first monster. Uh, and in fact, let's let's just have a look at this monster on the big screen. So this is the monster. This is its health in the top right, which is four. This is the amount of damage that it will deal to you. This is the reward for defeating that monster. And then there is a special ability. So we don't have to explain how familiars work in combat at the moment because I, I can't use it. But if I could use it, I basically spend one warmth, put the familiar there, and it gives me one of those two icons. So the way that combat works is it's actually explained on this card here. So this is the cave battle sequence. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll dice. And I roll three dice because I've leveled up once. Then any number of times you can spend one warmth to re-roll any number of dice. So you can keep doing that as many times as you want, spending warmth. Then what happens is any arrows that you've rolled on the dice or any potions that you use that have arrows, each arrow deals one damage. If at that point you've dealt enough damage to defeat it, which in this case is four, then you've defeated it and you don't need to do the next bit. Otherwise, the monster hits you. So the base damage of the monster is there, but then if you can pass me that nice chunky purple dice, you roll the monster die, which basically is a D3. It's two blanks, two ones and two twos. So you roll this and that adds on monster damage but every sneak icon that you have reduces the damage by two so you might take no damage after you've done step three you do step four which is swords every sword that you've got deals two damage and then if you've defeated the monster you get to use your lanterns to find loot now the critical hit icon which is that it can be used to add plus one damage to either all of your bows or all of your swords mm -hmm. And also, on the combat dice, there is a magic symbol. And each of us has a spell book. And magic can be used for various things, depending on how much magic you roll. So, let's see that in, in effect. I'm going into the first chamber. I have three dice. I can't use my familiar. I do have two potions. Do you use them after you roll the dice? Yeah. Yeah, so they pretty much use them whenever. So I'm just going to roll the dice. So let's um, let's just have a look at the dice. There you go. So I've rolled one sword, which would be two damage normally. Yeah. Uh, I've rolled a critical hit, so I can use that to make the sword do three damage. And I've also rolled a magic symbol. So if I wanted to, at this point, I could actually spend warmth to re-roll any number of these dice. Um... Or you can spend that one magic to flip your die using the inside spell. Oh, there's a there's a what? <laughs> so in your inside. Spell. Okay, so I can spend magic to turn a sword into a bow or a sneak into a lantern. Okay. Or you can spend that magic to heal yourself by one. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Have we looked at the difference between swords and bows? Swords are two damage. Yes. I, I went through the combat. Oh, it's on the cut. It's on there. Oh, okay. Yeah. But bows go first. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to use that magic to recover one warmth. And then... Can we 
taken her down. So you, you've rolled. I'm you've gonna no use. Arrows. I'm gonna use this potion. Yep. Which is magic. Yep. For another warmth. Because otherwise, the monster might actually kill me. Yep. Because it's dealing. <clears throat> so I've not killed it with arrows. Yep. So it's dealing two damage base. And if I roll a two, and I wasn't on four, then I would have been defeated. So as it is, it is it's two. not gonna kill me. It could knock me down to zero. Okay, it's only done two damage. So I go down there. Okay, right, because you've got no stealth symbols on the dial. Because I've got no stealth dodge. symbols to reduce it. And now swords. Yep. So I am actually going to use my other potion mm -hmm. as a sword. And with that sword, that's four damage. Yep. In fact, it's six because I my, my swords are criticals. Yep. So that die was wasted. I didn't need it. But that die with that alone would have only been three damage. Wouldn't have been enough. Okay. Okay. So that's how combat works. You didn't have any lanterns. You don't get any loot. No. So if I had, when somebody has lanterns, I'll explain how that works because yeah. that's a whole other mechanism in itself. Yep. But what happens is I get the bonus printed on the uh, on the card, which is I get a cave encounter or a level up. Ah, oh, that's what the, that the so the flag. flags. There's three types of encounters: no, sea copy. encounters, iceberg encounters, and and cave encounters. I can have that, or I can have a level up. Um, I'm actually just going to have a level up, and I'm going to level up my. I'm going to level up my dice again. Yeah, because I think just okay. the dice is really quite powerful. Um, and I also get that, so I get a secret goal for defeating the monster. Let's have two of those. So the dice we roll, are they all good for us. These, yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. It's just how they're good rather than some good, yeah. some bad. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna have that one, and then, whether I defeated the monster or not, I move to the next cave and I gain that bonus. I gain a crystal. We now reveal that monster because somebody's in there, and we replenish that one, and that's all that was revealed as well. So what have we got? So. The one that Pete and I have to fight is um, three rolls cost us two each rather than one. Okay. And the one you have to fight is your first bow has no effect. Has no effect. But in general, they're pretty much still sort of quite yeah. the same. Yeah. Okay. Four so hit points, two damage. So. And because I went into the cave, I cannot use my familiar. Yep. So that's that's my go. Well, normally you could have used them in the fight, but but I one, couldn't because that of that special use. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Okay, over to me. And I am sailing away. So, I'm running down here to the docks. Mm -hmm. I am leaping on board this boat. Yep. And You're going to the edge of the known world. Yep. <laughs> sailing for adventure. Okay. And you're Ooh. discovering. Yep, because I have. You've got two maps. You've got two maps. Because uh, I don't have two brown, I only have one. Correct. So I'll use my two maps yep. instead. So you spend the two maps. So we're going to get to see a part of the game that we've not seen before. Yep. Which is... Let's just zoom in on here. Oh, I hope we get this soon. I've already had to eat the cabbage, boy. I've been asleep for three hours, but I've got package. Get the focus sorted. There we go. Right. So, uh, basically, you're going to get a point. Yay. So, there you go. You got, you got a point straight away. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. Victory is mine. Put it there. Mm. And we're going to populate it with things. So. Precious loots. Uh, on all of the dark blue sea areas, we have a token from that bag. Okay. And on all of the icebergs, we have a token from that bag, including this one, because it's... even though it was connected to this one. So you could end up with more than one token on an area. Now, these are better. Yep. But you can't access these tokens from there. You can. Oh, you can. No, you can. It's, it's all one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here is one of them, and here is... That's... Oh, wow, two kelp all over there. Very nice. Great. I need a crate. Take the crate. Right. So that's the first thing that we do. We populate those areas. Um, now, does on, it does mean there is always a there's a pearl in there available for the familiar to get. Okay. Uh, the next thing is the landmark. So that tree, that icon there is a landmark. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we've actually got um, four landmark cards in in the village. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which are here. We just flip over the first one. These were shuffled. I'm sure the game's going to come with more than four, but we've only got four at the moment. Okay, flip over this. It's the Wandering Bazaar. So we take the Wandering Bazaar. Now, this is normally a standee, but because we've got an overhead camera, we're just going to light it down. So the Wandering Bazaar is there. And as an action, if you are on the iceberg, you can interact with this, okay. which basically means moving one of your cubes from there to there, mm -hmm. getting the benefit, and getting half a victory point. Gotcha. And I can only do that once. You, each player can only do that once, which is yep. why there's four spaces. This one's there. ability is any number of times exchange one for one yes. bubbles for these. Because I have very few bubbles, it's not worth me doing no. that just yet. Okay. Also on this tile, let's just go back to it. We've got, uh, there should be one there as well. Right. So we've actually got, there's a sea encounter here and there's a sea encounter here. There isn't one in both places. There's only one. And it's right now it's there because we put it on the space nearest the village okay you can go to this dark blue sea area and as an action you can take an encounter now although that's got both white and blue flags on it it's a blue flag because it's in a sea area and then what will happen is that will then move here okay so that will keep moving around this is the bit of the rules i'm not 100 percent sure on so i will look at the chat and see if the designers have told me that i'm, I'm getting it wrong but these are the other two actions that we didn't really talk about when we did the initial teach because they weren't okay. they weren't relevant. Now, as soon as you've discovered that tile, I believe you get to move and land on the nearest pier, but you don't get to do a supplemental action. Okay, also finding... Finding the thing was your action. Gotcha. And I'm just going to find that in the rules because I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think that's true. Um, map tile, map turn is... Let's just scroll down, scroll down. Down this guy, bouncing from that. Here we go. Discover. So when you discover a region, um, we put the iceberg exploration tokens, we put the sea explorations, we do the landmark, we do the encounters, um yeah it's not in there i think i think that's it again that's one of the rules that has definitely changed um since johnny pike says it goes in a four space rondel clockwise from sea to ice to sea oh there. right okay there there. So i see so there. where does it start it starts on life and then it goes clockwise so right once i've done that it'll appear as an ice one there didn't see and that see right. one there and then there and then, then back to here got it right okay um, but yes, for now, I think what happens is you go to here and you go to here, but I think that's it. I think okay, also so my action was to reveal this map. Yes, that was your action. So I've got a VP for doing it, mm -hmm. and then I can trigger your VP, who doesn't require heat to place him. Because you've leveled up. Yep. So in terms of placing him, he has to be adjacent to where I am. And I'm just from, I'm just wasn't yes. quite certain on the way we, we, we the So he, he's placed in a an dashed circle year area yep. that is adjacent to the iceberg where you are. So that's there. Yeah. You have so no, it has, no it has, to be, it has to be there. And he either takes what's underneath him. Yeah. Or, or something adjacent. from an adjacent space. Okay. So I think I will take these two. These two bubbles. Because given the bazaars there, I yeah. probably get some really good exchange rates in a bit. Bubble bubble. Okay. And that's it. That's your turn done. Kind of makes sense you'd collect the little thingy. That's, uh... Don't sure about the little thingy, but yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move here. Mm -hmm. so you gain one warmth. I will spend my pearl. Move the pearl up. So you can have one of those three items. What do you want? One of the three items. Which are they? There's a net of holding, a squibble quill, and a shadow cloak. Mm. Net of hog lets you every, every time you dive, you get an extra resource. Oh, nice. That's every time you advance your feather, you're yeah. going to get two bubbles. And that is uh, each each um, sneak ink icon that you roll is worth four. Double right. the to four cool. rather than two. Yeah. Okay. But keep an eye on what um, merit icons will improve those items. Right. So you've already got one yellow. And in fact, you've got two yellow. Yeah. So if you get either of them, it'll automatically it, they flip. automatically flip. And this one. Every time yeah. I advance my feather, yeah. I advance my feather if I've got one of these. Yes. And, you, yeah. and, 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 and how does the feather advance it? When, By... you, when you do that, the feather ball, but when you, when you first place it, it just goes there and you gain yeah. that. When you do that action, the feather moves on and you gain right. that. 
and it'll keep doing that. Yeah. So, so this easy. guy, Tusky Thrusk, wants me to find a crate. As soon as I right. find a crate, Got it. it advances. Okay, in which case, I think it makes sense to go for that one. So I'll have the one that, when the feather advances... Mm -hmm. the, um, and it immediately flips over because you have two yellow shields. Ooh, and that goes... Where does that go? Is there a place for this? Okay, small tip, if you notice, the two leftmost landmarks are placed a little bit higher than the other two. These represent the top left and the top right landmarks on the map. I think the position of these two. Right. They're slightly raised. Oh, okay. I was going with what the rule said, which was just to place them left to right. I think I think we're okay. What was you saying that, that that was supposed to, that is that one and that, that one. Okay, yeah, we, we can do that. It's not an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that done. I can now move my um familiar who mm -hmm. goes there. Gotta go on the top. So uh, level up and a bubble. And a bubble. Spend a bubble to two become potions. two potions. And you can also spend another bubble for a map. And I'll spend a bubble for a map. Nice. Um, and there we are. All done. Right. Just to check, that yep. cost me no heat getting Correct. there. Correct. Because it's all part of the same. It's all part of the same scene. Yep. Yeah. So. So, so I ate the cabin boy for nothing. Mm. Oh, well. Live and learn. Well, he won't, but... Yeah. Interesting. Right. Um, do we want to stay here and go in the cave again? I mean... You've toughened up. I've, 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 I've rolled dice. four dice. I still only have two warmth, but I've no potions. I have used all of my potions. Um, I don't think I am, because Tusky Thrusk wants a crate. So I'm going to spend one warmth to wander to this huge iceberg in the middle, and then as my hero action, I'm going to find a crate. So I'm going to find a crate. He's very happy about that. I get a crate and effectively two potions. Now, they have said that I don't have as many potions as going to be included in the final game. Okay. So we may end up running out, but we'll use these as a, as a discard pile. Um, I'll just put them on the bottom, actually. There you go. Right, so I gain the crate, and I've gained two potions. Okay, right. And then I am going to spend a warmth to place my familiar, so I can have a bubble, a bubble, or a bubble. And I can't go there, because you're already there. Yep. And there is no other tiles anywhere else, so it doesn't actually matter. I'll go there and get a bubble. Right, that's made up. Yeah. I'll just check. Yeah, you've got all sorts of if options. If I end up back here, here, can I make him go there again, or does he have to move? Yes, he does not have to move. Like, he can just keep hitting there. Stay on the same just space. Just looting everything around. I believe, cool. yeah. Right, I'm heading out to the sea. Well, not actually moving. I'm going to stay where I am. Then I'll use this ability to trigger... This, uh, okay, yeah. So I, I, I come out from the dock. Yeah, I think thematically you are you are getting on the boat to have that, yep. and that that is your action. But yep. it's not costing you any warmth. Yep. Okay, so, so we're going to move that to here. Yep. It's a. So what might be better? This is just a a, a a suggestion. Is have this not with both flags on? Blue flag on one side. White Blue flag on other. one side. White flag on the other. Because then you can have a smaller tile, just and you just flip it over as you're moving it. So, right. encounter cards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show this on the big camera. Okay. Because all three types of encounter cards work the same way. There is an immediate benefit. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of story. This is placeholder artwork. It's not, going to, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be nicer. But, as well as the immediate benefit, you've then got this. And this is, as a free action on your turn, whenever you meet this condition, you can get rid of this encounter to do this. Now, this is a rule which is currently under discussion, and the rule that we're using tonight is not the rule that it's going to be, but this actually involves a test, which is involved rolling another dice. We're not going to do that tonight. We're just going to say that that is two or more shields. So if you are on a space with a landmark, then if you've got two or more red merit icons, or you spend a mushroom, you can do that. Okay. Now, there's three different types of encounter cards. You can have one of each active at any time. Oh, cool. So immediately... Immediately gain a kelp. Get a kelp. Yeah. And then when I have either three red, which Two is, red. Sorry, two red. We're going to reduce it by one. Yep. 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 Then I gain this levels up 
Again, I gain this ability, which is... Oh, is that just take one of these? Uh, it's just the tavern icon. Yeah, so it's just that. Just it's not that. It's not that as well. Gotcha. Fantastic. And again, there's a reason for it. There's a little bit of story. There's a Chef little bit Wood of narrative. Hands. Cool, cool. So Chef Wood Scissorhands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Come, traveller. I could get you the real deal, but I would need you to get a hold of the ingredients I am missing. Oh, so if I bring him... I bring him some good stuff. Yeah. He makes me a big old bowl of noodles. Yeah, basically. Excellent. So that was your action. Yep. And then my familiar is going to stay. He's going to stay there and get yep. a pearl or. Um, no, I'll take two more of these. Two bubbles I'll from take, there. Uh, or that this one. one. Okay. Yep. Okay. Right. Over to you, Pete. I'll stay in the village. I'll go over here. I'll spend a mushroom. And um, get him. Mm -hmm. You put the member on the left hand side. There. Draw two secret goals. Two secret goals. Choose which one you want. And pop the other on the bottom of the deck. See, I've not used my special ability at all. I haven't needed to yet because the boat's mine. Mine lets me summon a boat and ride it. Uh, the boats have been there. Uh, I might, okay. If someone takes that boat away, I might then maybe there. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just whistle so then My familiar will come down here, and no, if I take Wait, two bubbles, effectively two bubbles, yeah. but I can't do that because I haven't got enough stuff. Uh, okay. Have you done everything once? Yes, you have. Right. So that's okay. The, the end of. My so you're all done. Uh, well, I'm down to zero wall, so I'm going to be going back to the village now. Where's where's a nice place in the village that's full of villagers and nice and warm? Um, how about over here? <laughs> uh, that'll load you up. I mean, it's for warmth. And you've got a crystal. I've I've got two crystals. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go here. So I gain four warmth. Yep. Now we're gonna see how this works. Yeah. So is. basically, one, two, three, four. Boom, boom, boom. And I can only do each of these once. So I am going to spend one of my crystals to level up. And I am going to level up my hero card. So that flips over. So that's basically given me a focus merit icon. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to spend one crystal to do... The tavern action because to do that would cost me one kelp so i spend one crystal to be able to do it and that increases that and because i'm a tavern tipper i can either take both offerings or increase my heat to the max well i'm going to take both offerings obviously and i'm going to take this one so i unlock one of those cubes to there um i gain a mushroom i gain a warmth and I gain a key. And you know what that means. Mm -hmm. I've gained a key. I've got a key. Yeah. And I've got a chest. So I'm going to use the key to unlock the chest. And I'm going to get... Bumpy treasure card. A artifact. So let's have a look. My familiar could trigger the encounter for you in the previous round, by the way. Oh, okay. I missed that. So this is the artifact. Uh, basically, it's a one-use thing. I can use it as a free action on my turn. And... Do I get all of those things? That would seem a bit too good if I get all of those things. I'm thinking that it's just one of them, but I'll wait for the uh, I'll wait for the designers to tell me what that is. But that's that's what I've got now. Apparently, oh, I pick one of them. Thank you, Johnny. On the previous turn, my familiar could have triggered the encounter for me. Oh, could it? Oh, I didn't realise that. So that encounter, that, hmm, hang on. I thought the encounter had moved to there. So you're saying, because you, did you move there before I got to the I don't encounter? know. I mean, I didn't realise that. Okay, so what I could have done is, I mean, I chose to take the bubble, but if, if they're saying that the familiar could have triggered the encounter, I didn't realise that that's what it could have done. That would have done it, and it would have moved on so that you wouldn't have been able to do it. Except I could then use my, my one to trigger it in my turn. It's oh, you could have done. Yeah, but it would have been a slightly different encounter. Yeah. So familiar actions. 
Um, you spend one warmth or not, if your familiar is leveled up, place your familiar on a vacant slot in the shallow waters. And ah, yes, and then either gain an exploration token or trigger an encounter from an adjacent spec. Right, okay, thank you. Good to know. So the familiars can actually do something. Right, nice. Anyway, meanwhile, back to my turn. So what did I do? I you found the key. went there. Yep. I spent a resource to level up. I also spent a resource to do the tavern. Yep. I took both offerings because they like me in the tavern. One of them was to get the key. The key opened the chest. That got me the Book of Songs. Right? And then... Oh, your special ability is you get my special ability is yeah because I, I tip my uh, and then I'm going to use my so it's all starting to uh, to come together now so I'm going to place down I don't want to do that yet I don't want to do that yet I need to do that and there's an axe there is that brown or red it's brown isn't it brown yeah mm, don't have any brown yet I've got two red. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go on the top. I'm going to level up. So I'm actually going to go to a level three tavern tipper. Mm -hmm. And I gain a bubble, but then I'm going to spend the bubble to gain a crystal. And then I'm going to spend another bubble to gain... Uh, I'm going to gain... Oh... Gonna gain a pearl because I have a plan. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're going. My turn. I'm gonna stay where I am. I'm gonna encounter this token to get myself two mushrooms. Shrooms. Two shrooms. Two shrooms, please. And then my familiar. Stay there again. Gonna trigger that. the iceberg. Yep. So I take this one. Take that one. So that moves to there. So it's Misha the Content. I wish I had more to offer, but alas, Flo has not been kind to me lately. If you bring me to a nearby dock, I can fetch you plenty from the deep. So, immediate benefit? Immediate is a... So you're at bubble six bubbles. If you ever gain more bubbles, they're wasted. And a potion? Yep. And if I take a ship to a space with two docks, I'll gain a heat and a dive. Okay. Well, there's currently only one of those there. That's got two dogs. That's got two dogs. All right, okay. Nice. Mm. Uh, that's, that's you done. And then that moves on to there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's my two. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, now, a couple of questions. Yep. Firstly, my... Here I've got... Um, so that's whenever you advance the feather, you gain two bubbles. Whenever I advance the feather, I gain what that or that. I advance the feather when I achieve that. Any one when of you these go things. here. If I go there, yeah, I know I get a heat which I don't need at the moment. But it's going to cost you heat to get there. Okay, so I get it back. Yeah. Can I then walk? Yeah. To get to the yeah. cave. Yeah, you can combine sea movement and land movement and. Okay. Well, let's do that. Okay. I need to whistle a boat because I'm in the village and I don't have one. You're in the village. Um, so you take, take that boat. So, where are you? Hang on a second, we got mixed up. We got mixed up, we got the figures mixed up. There we go. Give them my ears back. Yep. Right, that's my, all right, I'm going back to the village. Right, so you spend a bubble. I spend a bubble to whistle for that boat. Okay, so the boat. Comes Comes back to there. I jump on the boat. Yeah. Sail across to there. So just one warmth to go here. Yep. But then you land here. Yes. You get the warmth back. And that triggers your allies' quest. So that goes up. And because that's gone up, I get two bubbles. Yeah. And I'm going to have a map. Yep. And then you do a dive. And then, then I do a dive. You do a dive. So which one of those you want? Um, oh, interesting. I think I might have a map. Map. Map me up. Okay. And that was all three actions and stuff that you did on your turn. So then. Um, now I can't do anything with my familiar. Well, you've not finished your. You've until, not until after I've finished my Correct, move. Yeah. So if my move is going to be to trot round 
and go jump down the cave. Yeah, you're familiar with what you're doing on the map because it will be helping you out yeah. the cave and stuff. So I run around the shallows, so splash, 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 got to be a wall. Are you going in the cave? Dive into the cave. Okay, off we go then. And there we are. I'm the one with all the ears. So I should be, ad I've had advantages in caves. I should get extra <laughs> dice because I can hear in all directions at once. So you've got four dice. Yes. Um, mm. Off we go. First thing you do, roll them all. All right, you can spend warmth to re-roll any number of them. Right, let's just have a reminder of what those mean. So I've got, um, that is a sneak. sneak. That will reduce the monster damage by two. Okay. And you've got two of them, so that's currently soaking it by four. So that would mean you, you're you not going to get hurt, because the maximum damage extra it can do is two. So it's going to roll, it would roll a die. Yep. yep. And so it might potentially do me four, four. But four minus. Correct. Okay. Four. So at the moment, I'm doing it. Two, two damage. damage with arrows beforehand. Okay. Which is not going to kill it. And if you don't do anything else with potions or anything else, that's not enough to kill it. We'll just be kind of stuck there, will we? Or no, you, do, you move on. on. Yeah. Oh, I would keep, oh, so if I wanted to kill it, and I, if I kill it, I get the advantage of those Correct. bonuses. Well, let's do a bit of... Um, I mean, you've got so many potions. Surely some of your potions. I mean, a critical hit will do it. A critical hit will do it, because that will increase the arrows. Or a sword. Yeah, but the sword will do it after you... Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's because he's... Yeah, because he's... Yeah. You know, he shoots, shoots so gonna, gonna, gonna... In fact, he's not one warmth to re-roll against this monster. It's two warmth. Yeah. So I'm just going to wait. I'll, I'll, I'll fire off my arrows. Yeah, so we go down, we go down the order. You roll the dice. Oh, I'm not going to do any re-rolling. Yeah. No. Nope. I'll stealth my way past him two damage. putting you back. Two damage with the arrows. Yes. Now the monster hits you, dealing you three damage, but you've got two sneak symbols. Oh, it's not past Reduces them. the damage to zero. Because so I've got my ears. Yeah. Um, sword then I... One I, sword. I, my, I drink my potion and a sword appears, which yep. I use to wave at him. Um, I'll shuffle For the other up. two damage. Finishing him off. That's it. So nice. So I get... You get uh, a cave encounter or a level up, and you also get a secret goal, and then you get a crystal for moving on. How good are encounters? Well, yeah, Rob's got two of them. Be pretty nice. Are they any good? Yeah, so you get the immediate effect, and then you're going to get a, basically a mini quest. Um, no, go on, let's do that. Let's have so, a cave encounter. Yes, cave cave encounter. Or a level up. Mind you, a level up would get me up to... Um, no, it's, oh, sorry, I'm going to have the level up. Okay. I'm going to go to five dice. So I also get one of these. So draw two, choose one. Draw two, choose one, and then I get a crystal. And you get a crystal. Yeah. Now, you didn't use your familiar in that fight. You could have done. Your familiar is one warm to get a sword or a sneak. Right. But you use the potion instead, and you've got so many potions, it's fine. Yep. I'm going to keep this one and put this one at the bottom. And levelling up, does that let me advance here as well as... There's three options for levelling up. It's yeah. increasing the number of dice in combat, it's flipping your familiar, or it's increasing your hero card. Got it. So you can only level up seven times in the game. Okay. Maximum of seven times. Good. I right. That's my go. My go. I had a plan. Can you, oh, sorry, can, you, can you stay in the cave if you're in the cave, or do you have to come out? Yeah. And... Well, you come out, but then next turn you don't move and you go in the oh. cave. So, yes. You can effectively stay in the cave. I'm going to go here. I'm going to gain one warmth, but I'm already warm enough. So that moves to there. I'm then going to spend all of my pearls, or one of them, uh, and I'm going to buy my trusty axe. And if I have two... Is that a tusky axe, isn't it? Trusty axe. Is it trusty? Trusty, trusty ask. Uh, uh, axe. Crystal gold. Now. Um, yeah, I don't flip it just yet. I need another need another brown merit icon. But each sword that I have will deal three damage. So I've got me trusty. And then this goes down here. Um, I'm going to gain a wood. I'm going to gain a bubble. And I'm going to get to do an action. And I'm going to build. So I do move to here. I gain another warmth that I can't have. That moves to there. I'm going to spend two bubbles as if it was a wood. And then I'm going to spend one, two, three wood, because that's there. And I'm going to have um, can I have this one, please? And the one that's on the top as well. It's because we can take them. Yeah. yeah. We keep it's taking quite, part of the and they're not they're not required to be actual pairs. Yeah. Uh, and that gets me another bubble. 
Right, so that I now have to craftsmanship. All right, so my trusty axe becomes better. So let's just explain quickly what's on the bottom. So as well as the ability, I can also place a die onto this, and that die becomes a sword. Okay. So it basically allows me to. You'll always have a sword. Flip one of my dice over to become a sword, but that's what that's what that is. So. And all, all of the items work in the same way. Every single one is put a dice on it and the dice becomes a certain thing. Okay. So I've got my trusty axe. Tusky Thrust wants me to go down the cave. And that, I think, is what I'm going to do on my next turn. Okay. Tune in next week for an all new exciting episode of Fall in the Cave. Yep. It's been day three. I'm still in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> new six part series coming to HBO Max. Right, so I'm staying put again because now my action is to go and visit the the uh, bazaar. The bazaar. The so you're not bazaar. moving. You're going to the wandering bazaar. So you so put one of your tokens on there. Yeah, gets you half a victory point. So not them because I've got. Yes, he's got one and a half points. So I get one, two, mm. three, four. Oh, that's good. Five, two, three, four, five. All right, he's very good. Mm. Okay, and you're and familiar, right, Julia? Julia will take that map. The map, yeah, because I'm, I'm loaded with everything else. There's no point. You can take two else. bubbles, but yeah, maps, maps, good. Maps is good. Okay. I am about to get a point because as soon as I go to uh, one of these areas, I can drop that off. Oh, hang on one second. I sailed. I used the that is used that used the boat. Actually. I think it's use a boat. I think it's sail. Yeah. Now, I when bought, did you get that? I bought him in. Oh yeah, you would have done. Sorry, you should have done that before. I have a map. I'm a terrible human being. Right, you all done, Pete? Okay. Are you going in the cave again then? No, I think what I'm okay. going to do is jump on the boat. I need to walk around to it first. You need, so you spend one warmth to get here, but then you get the warmth back. Then I jump on the boat. Yeah. And then I go east. No, west. Go west? Yes. Okay. So you're going to discover this area? Yes. So you need one focus merit shield and one map. I spend the map. You spend the map. Right, so you get half a victory point. Woohoo, look at me. You get um, a C encounter. Right. I don't pick two and choose one. I... No, no. Do I do that now? You do that now. So that wasn't on yours. You didn't get one for that, but Pete does get one for that. Babooga. Keeping these afloat isn't easy, friend. If I help, if you help me get this to a shrine, I promise to warm you up. So I think immediately, I'm, I'm seeing that lightning flash, immediately kelp. I get kelp. Yep. Right, so why did he get... Because, because it's, I'm... it's on there. There's a blue flag on there. Ah, so gotcha. he got a sea encounter just from discovering it. And then on the space, gotcha. and then there's a hand, and it says on a space with. Yep. Now this is the thing where you said we were going to do it differently, wasn't it? Yeah, so if it's got a... Yeah, so if you need two red merit icons, or you spend the resources... And you'll get what's printed on there. So you immediately land here. So can you pass me the white bag, please? Right. So I don't have any wood, and I don't have two reds, so I can't do the thing that's. No, that just out. stays in front of you. Though. It stays there. Yep. And it, it, each time I. Then once when you are at that space or doing that thing, what's the condition on it? Um. It'll say when you are, yeah, on, when you're on a space with, I've no idea what that icon is. It's really small. <laughs> I'm going to show it on the big screen and we will ask the designers what that is. Because I can't quite see what it is. A space with two somethings. Uh, on a space with two somethings. Really? It might be in the icon reference. These. Is it? I think so. It's like the circular. Okay. Places to drop the flow stones on. Oh, these purple yeah. circles. Yeah. Yeah, it looks okay. Look it is it. those. Yeah. yeah. All the same. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. It's like that. Okay. Can't so yeah, that, th there is a there there. is a space with two of them on there. So. It's got. Oh, I see. So one. P okay. So if I landed he here, I would meet. I would fulfil that. Yeah. And then if I had two reds, 
or a combination of reds and wood, I could then get two wood, two heat, two warmth rather, and a crate. Yep. And then, and then once I've achieved it, that goes to the discard pile. Yes. Right. Okay. Got to get it's yeah. a one-off. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So you've landed here, but you can't do another main action. But your familiar can do an action. Right. And there's all sorts of options and spaces to go to. Um, a familiar can't go down a cave, can they? No. Um, so your familiar will go here or here. Yes. And then can do anything that it's adjacent to. This tile does not have encounters on it. It's... Oh, right. Okay. So two of them do, two yeah. of them don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, shrines, that's what they're called. Actually, shrines. These are shrines. So um, can I can I get the, that crystal from the... Uh, from the, the, the here? Piece? Yes. Yes. So you can put your familiar here, yes, and then you can get your familiar to take that crystal. Excellent. Have a crystal. Uh, how do I do that? Oh, I'll just grab one, one of those. Yeah, got it. Right. Me, where am I? I'm in town. I've got my axe, and Tusky Thrust wants me to go in the cave. So let's do that. I'm going to walk. So one, two, warmth, and main action. We're going to cave. Okay. So, so do you major trigger Tusky? Um, well, it is really going in the cave. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't think it matters, but I can I can increase any one of my things. I'm going to increase that one. Um. Yeah. Right. So we're fighting Floth. I've you. got four dice. My first bow and arrow has no effect. So, you're looking very stealthy. Yeah, so you're unharmed. We're, we're, we're all fine. We're absolutely fine. So, what I can do is I can use the magic to recover one warmth. I then, the first bow has no, I'm actually going to put the bow on there and it becomes a sword. And my swords do now three. deal three damage. So, it's going to hit me. It deals me three damage, but I've got two sneaks, so I avoid the damage, and then I hit it. So I didn't actually use my familiar. So that's gone. So I get a cave encounter or a map. Although you could if you to get a loot by using the... So putting it there, wouldn't that... Oh, it would get me a lantern. So then you'd, need, you'd get some loot. Yeah, no, I'm going to save the wall. Because we've not seen the lanterns yet. We might get to the end of this playthrough and not actually see the rules for lanterns. But that's just how it is sometimes. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to get this. So I'm going to, a cave encounter. Lost but found. Tiny critter is hiding between your, pa uh, between your paws, hoping you'll protect it. It also wears a key around its neck. Maybe the creature knows what it unlocks. Right, so I get a crystal. And, ah, so this, this one has an after combat. So if after combat I have two dice that are showing lanterns, I get a key and a chest. Wow. But I have to have two lanterns actually on the dice, which is pretty tricky to do. <laughs> right, so I did that, I did that. I also get that. And I also go to here and I get another crystal. And now I'm in the third chamber. So special stuff happens in the third chamber. Pop that at the bottom, thank you. Right. Should we replace that one? Yeah, that gets replaced face up. So in the third chamber, we reveal the cave card. Now, the cave card that we're using in this game is this one, uh, which is the Dark One's Throne. So there's an immediate effect which happens whenever you, the play, whenever any of us get to that third chamber, and there is this at the bottom, and I am going to have to ask the designers what this means. Gain half a victory point per hero card that you have. Can you let me know what a hero card is? Because I'm not sure what a hero card. I thought these were hero cards, but you've only really ever got one of them. So yeah, can you let me know what a hero card is? Anyway, that's the cave card for this game. So whenever you get to here, you trigger the immediate benefit of it. And if you are here at the end of the game, you get what, sorry, when you go to here, not at the end of the game, when you move to here, 
you get one of these benefits right and that benefit could be that one once we find out what a hero card is but immediately when we enter i may spend one crystal to do two level ups to my hero i don't think i want to because i've been leveling up quite you're quite high level i'm quite high level i've only got one two i've only got three more levels to do it's coming up Oh, there are no hero cards in the game. Oh, well, which ones are hero cards then? Maybe I'm using the wrong cave. Maybe it shouldn't be that one. Shall we? Shall we change it for this one then? Because yeah. <laughs> if there's no hero cards in the game, maybe that should have been a secret card. I thought to, I thought to count the hero card. Um, under cave shortcut. Let the designers check for that. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll we'll leave it on there. We'll let the designers check because I think that is one of the cards that we should be using. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know whether to do it or not. No, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, but again, crystals. No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so that's it. I've reached there and that's my turnover. Okay. So is there a monster there? Nope. Nope. That's it. Well, it's this one. Okay. That's his next move. Uh, that is the, well, no, I think, I think that's all part of one chamber. Okay, so, so you're sure. going to turn it over so you can see. I think, I think you turn it over so you can see it. Yeah. Okay. So lock every lantern you roll. Presumably when you roll a lantern, it's locked as a lantern. Okay. Hero cards are the ones you have. They're the ones you level up. These ones. No, they're these. No, these ones. Okay. So I don't... Yeah. So it's each, it's each level is... is, is I think it's because it's a prototype, they've obviously changed the way it works. I'm yeah. going to guess it's not per card you have. It's what level, what level but, you've got but, to. But what level you've got to. So I'm currently level three. Never. You can draft a new hero card when you reach your level, level four level. your burst. Can you? Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Oh, right. So you can actually, once you get to four, you get a new hero card. I didn't know that. That's a rule I didn't know. Okay. So are we saying then that when I get to level four, I get another hero card? Or is it when you when you would have gone when you would have leveled up the next? When you in which case, up. I'm in which case I'm definitely going to do it. Yeah. Okay, let's, well, let's do it then. Let's spend a crystal. So I'm going to level up to four, which gets me half a victory point. Yay! <laughs> half a victory point. Um, and I'm going to increase, and I'm going to level up my thing. Right, so are we saying then that because I've got four, if I level up again, I get another card? One. Yeah. yeah, so instead of leveling to level five, you get level one of another hero. Right. Okay. I didn't realize because yeah, there were there were extra ones available. They stack, so you have lots of abilities. Yeah. So instead of being a tavern tipper, tavern tipper, and I could have been, which is me, an explorer. So I think what we're saying is that if I level up now, I get I get a new card at level one, and yeah. then I would have two hero cards. So that would be actually one point at the end of the game. That sounds like it. Okay, that seems to make sense. Okay, exploring tavern tipper. Uh, I think that's my turn. Yeah, so I'm now in this chamber, and that's the next one that I will find. Mm, he's looking a bit tougher. Mm. So over to me. So I am returning home. <laughs> yeah, overboard game says they need to add that to the how to play video because that that I didn't know that rule. But it makes sense because I thought there was a limit on leveling up, and mm. now there isn't. Yeah, you just keep adding more, more well, hours. It's, so it's, it's 11, but also run out. Yeah. yeah. So I am going to... Are you going to move? No, I'm going back to the <laughs> village. I've been there for three days. Yeah, I know. I've been <laughs> just hanging out. Heading back to the village. So first location I'm going to is to build something new. So... It costs you all of your wood. Boom, boom, bam. And then I build one of these. I think I will build... The one that lets me take a crystal, and the one that gives me another. Uh, you've got to take a, a set. Oh, it is a set. It is a set, yeah. what it was. Okay. Um, okay, I'll take these ones. Right. All right. Okay. And then, then your familiar action. Yes, my familiar is going to jump himself down to the bottom one. So we're immediately getting two more of these. Yeah, two more, and two more bubbles. Take a bonus action. Yeah. So the action I'm going to take 
is to jump across to here. Gain all the warmth that you can't have. Yep, so I'll just chase all this little <laughs> cycle round. And you go into the tavern? Yes. Okay. Enough, so spend all of your kelp. That goes up to, there. to the top. That's ready now to be unlocked. Yep, so I can pick one of these and see the so Right, it's a cube. Whatever happens, whatever happens, happens. the cube comes out. Yeah. So pearls are already full, so it's either a dive. Or two bubbles. Or two bubbles. And a dive could be whatever you want from here. Because I need a lot of them for that. I'm going to take this one here, which will be two more of these. Mm -hmm. Two. He goes to the bottom. Which then also moves him onto there. Does that mean I now level up something else? Yeah. Nice. Okay. You're almost at the end of that one. Yeah. You've just got to have a sea encounter or an iceberg encounter. Yep, funny that. Oh, same as me. That's what I need to do next. Yep. Where are those encounters? There. That's the only one. It's the only space where it is. Shall we forever new one? Yeah, we don't know. It might be there, it might be here. Okay, we'll find out. Somebody else will. I haven't okay, got any maps. So I've got those <laughs> to give my bonus action. I have to be in a space with one of the secrets for that one and a space with Doc to trigger that. One, one. of the landmarks, yeah. Yep, yeah, so those two are fine. Him, I need to go and do a, a C location encounter for. So I think that's me done. Done. Eight. Okay, I'll just hop across to the cave island. So just uh, so it's going to cost you one warmth because there's no there's no pier here. Yes, I'll yeah. do that. So one warmth to go into here. Yep. One warmth. And yep, one warmth. And uh, let's go cave. spelunking. Okay. Right, off you go then. So I'm here. Yep. Uh, so I need to have an argument with Krabby McCrabface. Where's the fifth dice? So I start by rolling some dice. You've got five dice now. I need to do four damage to him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, your sword can do five five damage each. And you've got two of them. <laughs> nice. Mincing machine. But remember, you can spend a warmth to re-roll. Or you can just hack it bloodily apart because it's only doing between one and three damage to you. So. Um, but the sword is going to go after it attacks me. Correct. So it's going to do potentially one, two, three, or three damage. One, two, or three damage. And the stealth doesn't do anything on this one, so there's no point trying to defend. Oh, right. Okay. That's its ability. Yeah. Yeah, stealth I mean, has no effect. There's a low level attack. In which case, I just there's take no point it. Doing it. Take right. it okay. it so the damage you take is three damage. You're down to zero warmth. Is it three or two? Sorry, two. Two. You can't add up. Take zero warmth would be. Okay. And I could use magic to take uh, to get one back. Uh, yeah, if you've got magic stuff, I've got a magic magic potion. I can use that to get a warmth yeah. back. Well, let's do that. Yeah. Um, and then okay. you kill it for ten damage. <laughs> it's splat. Crab sticks for everybody um, tonight. Okay, so you get a cave encounter. Yes. But you've already got a cave encounter. So I can only have one. Yeah. Now you could take the new one, yes. get the immediate benefit, and then choose Ooh. which one to keep. Ooh. Or you could have a key. Which you haven't got yet. Keys are good. No, I'm going to take the uh, cave encounter. I like, I like this. Um, so you get the immediate benefit. Which is a crate. Which I like. And then do you want to keep that card or the other one? No, after combat have two that's two magics mm -hmm. does magic on appear dice. on dice yes. oh, on dice yeah and if i get do that then that's does that mean i get another one of these yes ah right. well you can only have one at a line oh, at that's, sorry boo -boo -ga. <laughs> you looked interesting at the time but i'm afraid you've been supplanted oh no that was a sea encounter that wasn't a oh. game sorry that was that was a sea encounter oh so i can have different... you can have both yeah oh, i was okay. gonna say it's blue why is it yeah you're okay okay so i've done that um, and you get a secret goal. Secret goal. And you get a crystal. And I get a crystal. And then you've arrived at the cave, which Great. means you can spend that crystal for two levels up. Yes. Oh, definitely doing that. Right. Well, to the, the, uh, I'm hearing yep. thing here. It says five, five or more. Yes. Yellow and red merit. Icons. Combined, Combined or, or of each. Oh, I, keep I don't think you can get five of each. <laughs> Good. Well, I spend a crystal then yep. to get two levels. Two levels. 
and I'm just going to go bump straight up to cartographer level three. Okay, which gets you a super ability and a merit shield as well. Yeah, so your ability is now better than it was. Yes. Okay. All done? Yep. Right, I'm full of warmth, and apparently I'm here. I'm in a slightly different cave, but... Um... Can, I, can I go down this cave and come out at your room? No. Okay. <laughs> Tusky Thrust. Tusky Thrust wants me to do an iceberg encounter or a sea encounter. And yeah, the only the only one is here. And it will take me an absolute age because I'm going to have to go here, call a boat, and then sail to here. So it's possible it would be one warmth, then a bubble, then another warmth. I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, he does want me to do it. And it does get me over there. And there is some good stuff over there. So I'm, I'm going to do it. So... I'm going to walk to here. They do push them off. Oh, okay. So I'm going to walk to here. And because I've walked to here as a free action, I'm going to drop that off there. Oh, you can get only, a point. Can, can it only take one? Can only take one. Oh. And I get a level up. So at this point, I am also going to become an explorer. So as well as being a tavern tipper, I'm also an explorer, which means whenever I go into a cave or get a sea or iceberg encounter, I gain a bubble. And then I'm going to spend a bubble, buy a flare, send the flare off to get a boat, get on the boat, spend one warmth to get to there. Yeah, one warmth to get to there. Then as my action, I am going to have that. So that is a sea encounter. That flips to there, which is this. And then because I've done a sea encounter, I gain a bubble. And also because I've done a sea encounter, I gain half a victory point added to my existing half a victory point or two points. And that is complete. Okay. My sea encounter is the Kraken. I gain a pearl immediately. And after I do a dive, I can get some extra stuff. Right. Okay. And then my familiar. Is that an interrupt action? It's a free thing that you can do any time on your turn. Gotcha. Yeah. Where's my familiar going? So my familiar can go... Uh, where's that? That's in the sea. Yeah, so I can go there and I can take that. And I get two kelp. Done. Right. Okay. Back to me. Mm. Okay. So I will quickly jump across to here. I think this is the right thing to do. Buy yourself an item. Yeah, just working out where to stay. Hmm. I'm gonna actually nip back back out into the world. You don't want to do that. Away from the village. Right. There's krakens out there. Yeah, but so... the krakens have got pearls. They're lovely. <laughs> First things first, I'm starting here. Yeah. I spend one heat to move to here. And then I drop one of these there. Which gets you a level up and a victory point. And a level up, which will be to let's check this one does. I'll flip that one over. Then I'll spend another heat to move to here, drop this one down, another point, add another level up, another point, another which will make to put my wind caller to this side, mm -hmm. just got those two sorted, um, I will then hop on the boat and spend one more heat to sail across to here and spend my maps to explore again. So it's... Uh... So you've, what have you got? Two maps? Two maps. It was either two maps or two yellow. I haven't got the two yellow. So, so it's two maps. Two maps. Gain a point. Gain a point. And we discovered this tile. Yep. So we didn't do the landmark. Sorry, everybody. Did anybody in the chat say that? <laughs> we forgot to do the landmark. 
So the landmark here is the lighthouse. There you go. And the landmark here is the sunken ship shipwreck. And do you place your cube there when you go there? You do. Yeah. So apologies for that. We forgot about those two landmarks. Right. We need to populate these two areas. You need to go to the nearest pier, which is I'll there. Pause one second. Yeah. Right now, I'm on a space. Because when I'm in this ocean here, yeah. I am on a space with a... Um, no, the landmarks are... I be, well, I believe the landmarks... Oh, no, that landmark is in the sea. I mean, thematically, it's a sunken wreck. Yeah, so I, mean, I can trigger this. So, I've got yeah. these two reds. Okay. Three reds. That means he flips, and I get another one of these. Is that correct? What's that? So that is just take one, one, of, the, one, yes. of, these, yeah. one of these ones here. So, so I will right, take this one to take this last cube to there and wow. another map, please. Another map? Yep. I shall blow it over here, it's all right. Okay, so. Right, populated it with tokens. So you're all done, but your familiar gets to do something. Yep. So do I have to land on that one? Uh, I believe it's the nearest pier. Okay, that's on the on that's, the new board, that's on the new tunnel. Remember. So yeah. Okay, so and that's been fully seeded. So I will... oh, there's encounters. This is the encounter tile. So it's going to start off. Well, I think it starts off here. I think this is the nearest space. So oh, there it you goes. go. Top left. So I thought it was always. Is it top left corner? No, I think it's. Right? I think it's always the nearest one. Oh, that's right. Whilst I was in, to because I've sailed to a space with has two. Is this what I have spell space with two docks? Uh, this space has two docks. Yep. So this one then triggers, which gives yep. me a heat and a dive. And the dive. Um, so exploring. Discovering a region, landmark, encounter, oh, one heat. Place an encounter standee over the icon in the sea area closest to the village. Ah, so it's that one. It's that one. So yeah. it goes there. That is closest to the village. Right, got it. Okay. So it's not closest to you, it's closest to the village. That's fine. Got it. Yes, thank you. Then I can place, so I'll place him for free. I'll just take that, I'll stick it. Chest, there please. and take that chest. Yeah, yeah. one chest, please, please, for me. Oh, crate. One crate, even that chest. Yep, yeah, very important. Uh, yeah, it's not the map, so I'll just trade that in right now. Okay. Right. The chosen dive action needs to be moved to the bottom. What did you dive for? Oh, the key. The you dive for a key. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that shifts around. Got it. Did I get my? I think that's is that everything. Yes, because I was I was there. I just got those those. You did all two, sorts of stuff. Yeah. And that one. That was yeah. it. Yep. So that's why I said so you're on four points. Four and a half points even. Yep. Okay, Pete. Right. Um I think I want to walk across to the island that's got the So it's one warmth. Yeah. So this landmark is the lighthouse. So, so if you drop a cube off, you're going to gain a crate. Yes. And you gain half a victory point. And from now on. Which for you is a point. And yeah, from now on, you can basically summon a boat to any dock for one warmth instead of a bubble. Okay. Now, whilst I'm there. That is your action. I don't do it. You, you can do encounters and free actions and things like that. But you can't do any. You can't do a main action because visiting the landmark is a main action. So I don't get to pick up the two wood. No. But my familiar. Your familiar could. Where is it? I don't know. You lost them here. There it is. So your familiar can go here, and get the map, the two wood, the dive, two bubbles, two bubbles or a map, or two pearls, any of that stuff. Ooh, two pearls looks interesting, but no. Um... Two two bubbles, I think. Two bubbles. Yes, please. This one? Yeah. Okay. 
Right, my go. Um, yeah. See, not having an ally means that I kind of got no... I mean, I could use that. A Book of Souls is to get an ally. Should have done that, didn't I? But it also does that. And it also does that. Yeah, so many options. So, so many options. Um, I kind of want to do that because of that. We should reveal... No, we haven't fought this yet, have we? Oh, that's quite tough. But actually, that reward is what I want. Because that increases my help level. I think we might have to do that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's... Oh, it's going to cost me all that warmth to get there. There's no cave around here, is there? Hmm. And the boat's there. What does the sunken wreck do? Uh, you can level, you level up. Half a point. Immediately dive and get this room. Yeah. Does that mean you may or you have to take? I think it's that one because it's it's at the bottom, so okay, you get that enough. reward. I mean that's quite cool. It's, it's 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 the points as well. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna spend two warmth. We're gonna go for a walk over here, and then back down to here. And then we're going to go in the cave. So, Eve again. Yeah. Right. I'm on four dice. I do have a couple of potions and I have a crate. Ah, forgot about that. Ooh. Right. So, four dice. We're fighting Rabbitang. And every lantern is locked. So, we may see the lantern rules yet. Well, magic, magic, well, magic. Now we need to look at the spell book because. Okay, so my artifice spell is use two magic as a wild. Now, the problem is it's dealing two damage. That's that's going to kill me. I need sneak icons. So I could use those two magic together as a sneak. Yep. That will reduce the damage by two. Unfortunately, if he then rolls two damage. I'm gone. It. Can you not use the two magic to give yourself two yeah. hit, hit or, or do that. Yeah, that's probably easier. I could just use the three magic to get three warms. To get yeah, three warms. potions, but either them help. Nope. That's a no. Nope. Yes. Well, they will, will they? They, they? they will, actually. Yeah. This, this does do it. Okay. Right. I am going to spend those three magic to gain three warmth and then it's going to hit me so it's hitting me for two four down to zero i am then going to hit that sword which is three damage and another sword which is also three damage because of my trusty axe mm. again you don't need to kill it mm. to move on and you hadn't rolled any lanterns, we didn't lock it. I didn't roll any lanterns, so we've still not seen the rules for lanterns. But I can either gain a crystal or I can increase that. I'm going to increase that. Um, so that's that gone. We're going to need one. And then I move on to here, and I get two crystals. Oh, and I get half a point as well. Just noticed. Excellent. Very much. Uh, two crystals for moving on. So that right. The race is on. Yeah. Also, again, well, you couldn't have used Yuma because he would have crushed you the heat that would have killed you. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. Yes. Forgot about. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think any any of us have used our familiars in combat yet. So this is when we take. Yes. Yeah. He wants you to go and have an ice or sea encounter. So as soon as you do, right. then that's that done. So here we go. So into the boat and i'm going to this encounter right so yeah you're just you're just doing that yep. as your action doesn't cost you any warmth oh 
I am going to move to this landmass and encounter it from here. Oh, okay. So you get on the boat, you sail over to here. Rear. There is a reason for that. You're going to land on this iceberg. Yep. I'm going to encounter. And you're going to, mean, you're going to do the sunken sea. So yep. there, there is a question. I mean, it doesn't say that this is a sea encounter. So I don't know if the landmarks can be done from land or sea. I assume they, they can because all of the landmark icons are kind of on the oh, yeah, sort of on touching, the aren't yeah. they? Okay, so, so you drop a drop sorry, a cube off. First, first, drop one in, which gives me half, half a point, point, which clicks me yeah. back down up to five. Boom, and you level up. Level up. So I flip this over, which gets me half a point. Half a point, and you do the immediate immediate benefit of okay, gaining a, a key, key, but I can't. You can't have a second key. Okay. Okay. Then my familiar jumps to here. Familiar goes to there. Here. I have this encounter. Right. Which immediately triggers Peach the Posh, giving me my second one, hitting the six. Six. Wow. And I'll have a... I mean, I didn't know how long the playthrough was going to be, but... I find the Frost I can can Frozen Canyon, so that one... Can't get that, so I get that instead. Yep. And if I was on a space without docks, I could get a map. But I think at this point, that's the end game triggered. Uh, it is. So that encounter was triggered, which yep. means it moved around to there. So we finished this round. So you were first player, so yeah. I get a go. And, and then, then we, we all get one more go. And that's okay. it. So we do get one more go. Fantastic. Landmarks are both land and sea. Yeah, it makes sense. Yep, yeah, so I'll keep an eye on that one still anyway. Hmm. Right. Off you go then, Pete. You've got five points to get. Easy. <laughs> go for it. Wow. Suddenly these secret goals, which I thought were going to be easy to do, are Yeah. Sorry folks if you were no longer easy to do. <laughs> I don't have enough time. Uh is that an extra half a point next to the six point marker? I think. I mean it's just a placeholder. That is the end of game trigger. Yeah. It does look the same as the half victory point marker. Oh, and Peach the Posh has uh popped yeah. off. But I don't think I don't think the first player there gets half a point. That's just the chicken. I, I I don't think so. If if they do, then yeah, yeah. Oh, that does does give you half a point. Okay. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll come back to. Um, oh no! Yes, yeah, it's a bonus half. Oh, point. it is a bonus half point. Kaching. Okay. Wow. So does that? We can take it off. That now. disappear. Yeah. Hey, fantastic. Well, there you go. I was going to say, if it wasn't that, they need to change the icon because yeah. that icon is half a point. It turns out it is half yeah, a point. So it's, it's both the end game trigger and the bonus for getting yeah, there first. Okay. Okay. Right, I'll come back to the village. Back this again. is you. Yeah. So you gain two warmth. And yep. you can do each of those things once. Right, well I will spend a crystal to level up. Mm-hmm. I've got I've got a great which is two potions. I might as well take those just in case. Um oh, there was a lantern on one of them. We could have found out what lanterns <laughs> did. I will explain the lantern rules at the end of the video because okay. I don't think we're going to actually. I'm going to spend I'm the other half point. Don't He's worry. taking the half point. He's done. I'll then spend the other crystal um, to do um, this action. So that action would cost you two no, crystals. No, no, no. Sorry, this action would, would this cost action. you two crystals. It, you can't mix and match. It's spend crystals instead of the cost. And the cost is two kelp, so it would cost you two crystals. Um, uh, if you thought it was mix and match, I'll let you do it because no. the game's about to be over, and it's probably not going to make much difference. I thought I thought I was going to be able to go there, spend a crystal, and then be able to do that action. Yeah, no, no it's the number of crystals equal to how many resources it would cost you to right. do the action. Okay, okay, okay. No, I didn't. No. Um, No, I can, I can spend another crystal and level up again. If you've got another crystal, I did have two. Okay, so I'll spend my two. Uh, you can only do each one once. Oh, okay, unfortunately, um, I'll keep that crystal. Yeah. Um, in that case, now that's the end of my go. And you're familiar. Um, there you go. We'll go. Well, the familiar can go here, mm -hmm. and then I can do one of the actions. Yeah. So I have. Um, so right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do. Um, Which action do you want to do? I think I want to do. That's the tavern action. Yeah. Yeah. So if you spend two bubbles to gain some more kelp. Yeah. 
Two bubbles. Yeah. Gain some more kelp. Kelp. Spend all the kelp. Go to the Bump tavern. To there. Spend the kelp. Gain a warmth. Yeah. So you unlock a cube and get either of those things. Yeah, unlock a cube. Get one either of one of those things, which the material. I'll take that one. Okay. Well, I think that is the end of my go. Um, and you get two bubbles for your. Oh yeah. Yeah, two bubble pack. Right. So my go. This is the last turn of the game. So I have to drop that off because it's a point. I've got no warmth. I'm looking at my secret goals and I'm working out what I need to do. And unfortunately, it requires me going back to town. But if I go back to town, I can't drop one of these off. So, yeah. Not great, is it? Now, am I going to be able to get... No, because I need two more turns to do that. I mean, there's half a point there. If I was to be able to beat that, chance of me beating that, slim to none. Yeah, and you still couldn't move because you're out of heat. With no warmth. Yeah, so, yeah, if I do stay here, all I'm doing is entering the cave. Unless I have a way of gaining warmth, which I don't. Right. I can't do either of those. So, yeah, it's just a case of... Um, and I need to do that for that. Oh, but I can't. I have got the warmth, so I can't actually move. But I've got to go back to town. Yep. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, messed that up, haven't I? Because I, it's me that actually needs to go there. My familiar can't do it. Rats, I'm not going to be able to drop that off, which means I can't do that. Ugh. Right. So my best bet is to go here. I will spend three crystals for half a point, which is a point. And then I'm going to spend one crystal to level that up to five dice. Yeah. Having unlocked flowstone with zero warmth. So oh, no! <laughs> um, and then my familiar. Okay, so... Yeah, I mean, I don't think leveling up at this stage is going to actually do anything. But... Yeah, because you've already flipped your half point for leveling up your main character. So. Yeah, unless I can somehow level that up three more times, three more times which I can't. I can do it once. Um, I don't know if crystals are going. I don't know if diving is going to get me anything. Probably not. No, you can... unless you had the key, already had the key or a chest. But could you... Yeah, but even then, the artifacts are not worth points, points yeah. as such. So I'm just looking at these goals, really. I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, oh, I'm, oh, this is so close. Oh, so close. Right, no, I'm going to go here, and I am going to do this action, which is to gain a warmth. Did you just move Pete across? I did just move Pete across, so it's not a warmth. No. Because he's got a green base. Yes. Um, and... So I can do the tavern action again. It would just cost me four, four kelp, which I have. So I've got some kelp in the in the crate. I spent two bubbles, so I've got four kelp. I spend four kelp um, to do the tavern action. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know what the artifact's going to get me though. I mean, it'll get me an ally. Oh, and then an ally will get me a thing. Get you an sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll use the I'll use the book of souls to take an ally. Okay. Because that it doesn't matter. We'll have we'll have Captain Captain Safeharth. Um because that gets me a secret goal, which might score you another one. No. No, or not. <laughs> or or not. I'll I'll take that one. I've already got four now. It was worth a try. Thank you very much, chat. Yep. Good idea. Good idea. Anyway, yeah. I've gone to the tavern, yeah. so I unlock another one of those. 
and I get both offerings, or I replenish my heat to max. But we need another card. And what do I want? Oh, well. <sighs> okay, none of them are actually any good. So let's have that one. So I advance that. I gain one of those. I gain one of those. And I gain one of those. Which one did you take? I, I took that one. Oh, that was the bottom of the deck. So. Uh, and I also get one wood, two bubbles. But that is it. That is my go done. I scored a mighty three points. Okay. But this is tough, isn't it? <laughs> I have some end of game scoring cards. Uh, right. Just to check. So apart from getting these ones to the top. And the little half points. And then have. placing them in a shrine. No, building none of these. Apart from that, there's nothing here that's going to no. VP. So it's not, not worth going back to town. I've still no. got heat. So I'm finally going to use one my, more quest advancement. And I could place the flow stuff. What do you mean one more? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that would let you do it. So that so if I'd have got to there, that would have been place a flow stone. So I don't know what that is. Is that I think when I get one to the top? Well, I think it was when you, when you placed one, you got one, maybe. Mm. But anyway, I didn't. I didn't manage to get it. I'm so. finally using my wind caller. Ability. Oh right, so Spend one warmth, one wind, one warmth. Summon the ship to just sow anywhere I like and go anywhere you to want to this dock. Right. If I sell okay. to this dock, then I will. You're going to discover. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because it's got me. It's got me a lot of points. So you need a green shield. I have a green. And I have a map. Boom, so boom. you get a white iceberg encounter. Yep. Do we do this in order, or do we just and add half a point? So I get the half point, yeah. which pushes me up to there. And you get that. It was one, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was, was white. So yeah. that's, I would gain a mushroom. No, it's already all capped out. And if I was on a space without the ox. It's the final one, Mark, yep. which is the Feather Sanctuary. Yeah, so I get two two free levels if I was on a space without docks, but I, I don't, so it doesn't matter anyway. One, two... Right. Oh. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, oh look. Oh, is that a... There's a there's a flag as an actual sea oh. encounter. So I end up my turn flag. here. You land here. Yeah. Yeah. Which gets me a heat because I'm landing on Yeah, you still get the heat. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. I then Trigger, so then I can then place him. So if I place him there, mm -hmm. I can then take that chest. Cut. And now, because I have a chest and a, and key, a key, I you get, get an artifact. An artifact, just for fun. Yep, and that is just. Oh, actually, it does matter. So I can do I place one of these three things. Is that right? You can use that to get one of those three things. Okay, so I'll use it to take one of these because I only actually have. Oh one right, of these. So, so you can use the. Uh... Use the Ring of Shadows to take an ally. Quest. So sake, um, Same as me. Yeah. Hot Horn Hawthorn. And which gets you a secret goal. Draw two of these. So while you're doing that, because that's your turn done, Pete, if you want to take your final turn of the game. Okay, well, I'm going to jump on board a ship. So you're going to have a bubble. If I, if I go here, can I interact with that yes. and drop off a yes. thing? Dropping a thing is a free action. Um, and if I go here, how do I uh, do the ship back? So I could drop off a thing and, and do the ship do that. It's whether you wanted to do that or that. And the this ship will definitely get you half a point. Yes. This will not. Although I get half a point. Oh, okay. For that. <laughs> um, well, your familiar could do one and you could do the other. Really? Yeah. Familiars can do encounters. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get the full advantage, but I might not do that. So you don't need skull ship. You just need to walk here. So I need to... Okay. Am I not going to need a ship to do the ship deep sea no, ship wreck? No, it's just off the shore. You just swim down. Okay. Um. All right, let's do that. So one warmth to go from there to there. Yes. And then you can drop off the flowstone, which gets you a point and a level up. And a level up. A level up. Him. Mm -hmm. And then your action will be the shipwreck. So, can shipwreck. Yep. so you place one of your cubes on there, you get a level up. Oh, so I can have a level one smuggler. 
Well, what else could I do with the level up? I've done That's it now. now. I've done, okay, level yeah. one smuggler. You get half a point. Half points. And you immediately get a key. Okay. Yeah. You just hold your key up. Just like oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that was your action. Yeah. And then Thanu can go. What do you want to do? Do you want to do that? That's an ice encounter. Yeah, might as well. So you go there and you do that encounter. Okay. So, so that's going to move to there, which is that. Yep. Okay. Uh, Fair King's Temple, the only, no te te the only known temple dedicated to the Fair King. It is undisturbed. Uh, that's what they thought. And probably full of artifacts, but you'll need some help if you want to get inside. So immediately I get a um, either a bubble or a potion. Let's have a potion. Mm -hmm. um, but importantly, that has completed your ally quest. Oh, yes. Which gets you half a point, which is... Half a point. point. And with two plus villagers... Okay. Yeah, so if you are on a space here with two or more villagers, ah, you can complete great. that okay. part of it. Right, but that's it. Well, well, so, well, before I just finish yes. the turn, I was just going to cash in... I was going to do this ability sure. three times. Yeah, okay. to go one, two, three, one, two. You can walk to the, towards the Feather Sanctuary, place a flowstone while travelling there, then visit the landmark, getting another half a point, and finish the ally quest, getting another half a point. Oh, and Pete's got eight potions. Yeah, apparently the maximum is six potions, but it's all right. I'm don't, drinking them on the way don't, don't worry about it. So just going through what you could have done, where's the Feather Sanctuary? So they're just working out the optimal use of points. Walking towards the Feather Sanctuary... Placing a flowstone on the way, so that would have got you the point. Right. Then when you walk to the Feather Sanctuary, you do the Feather Sanctuary instead of the Sunken Shipwreck. Right. Which would have got you half a point. Right. You got half a point from there as well. And that road. would have completed that, which got you the half a point. But you did all of those things. But I got level yeah. ups as well, which... Yeah, the way, the way you did it. It, it, it was all the half point. point from there and the half point from and there. And those, yeah, that, those level ups are going to give me victory points because of my You still cause... got three half points on your turn didn't you yeah it's just a different way of getting three points anyway end of game goals yeah. so i'll do mine first because i was the first player uh no flow left unturned i needed to have placed that one and that one so i didn't do that uh and i needed to have five or more in a combination of green and brown merit shields so no hot to the touch i needed to have unlocked three of those cubes so close mm. and i needed to have three or more red shields i've got four. One, yeah. two, three, four. so half a point i need to replace that one and that one and i needed to have five or more red and brown well i've got four red uh, two brown at least do i three. have two brown on the other side yeah, for one, two. Oh, yeah, so sorry. It. Yeah, yeah, I placed it. Yeah, okay, so I've done that. That's half a point. Mm -hmm. right. And my final one, I needed to be on five, which is half a point. And my, I needed to have passed the cave. Yes. So I got I got both Good of those. At the end. Good jump at the end. Five okay. points. Nice, nicely. So I had just enough, which was have two green, two brown. Pearl and a kelp. Pearl and a kelp. Yeah, so I have that. So that's, that's half a point. It's half point. Yeah. Annoyingly, I don't also have two pearls and two. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that was a whole point, wasn't no, it? No, no, but they're, no. They're all they're changed. They're all half points. Okay. And then other ones I drew there. Oh. None of them worked because this one was. Oh right. Two, two, you know, two of these. On yeah. Different map tiles, but different map tiles. You've got them both on the same. Right. Because yeah, okay. you jumped into that one. <laughs> there. And. Two or more yellow and two or more red, and I've got one, two, three, four red, but not. So you don't have two, two or more yellow. yellow. So I got no, I got half a point. Okay, so I got quite lucky with these these ones. Pete, what you got? Um, well, um, I thought that was going to give me a whole point, but it's half. It's and everything's half. half a point. Okay, so I'm, I'm at level four. I'll just put it there. Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay. Um, and I've upgraded my okay. familiar no, four. Um, here I haven't done the pearl one. Mm -hmm. Even though I've done that one, so I don't get that. But I have got five plus of reds and yellows, okay. so, so I get a half, half point. Um, but this one was all about getting here, and I didn't right. do that, so neither of those. Okay, but they are saying that it was unlocking it, not placing it, so you do get half a point more, Paul. This one, because you'd 
Oh. Point of that, it's, it's not placed, I think it's unlocked, so you do get Oh, right. Okay, awesome. So I'm assuming those means unlocked. Right, okay, so that's unlocked, not necessarily placed on the board. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So, okay. so I didn't, didn't need it. to rush around and do it. Anyway, the order. final so. scores. I mean, yeah. to be fair, I, I was four points you, behind yeah. until final score. I got, well, I got half a point from these, so I did not get... Well, I got, I got like two and a half, didn't Yeah, I? you got a good chunk from there. So Rob wins with seven. I got five. Seven and a half. Sorry, seven and a half. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All on halves. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Paul got five and a half. Pete got four and a half. Lanterns. So we didn't see lanterns at all, but let's out. briefly explain I how lanterns I think the winner should be the one who's got the most, the most potions. potions. So <laughs> when you're in combat, if you defeated the monster, for each lantern that you rolled, we didn't see one, did th we? there are lanterns on these dice, and you can get lanterns from other places as well. I've got one. Yeah. What happens? There is a bag of tokens we've not even looked at. Right. So for each lantern you've got, you reach in, see what you found, and you draw it out. And if you don't want it, you can put it on there and draw again. Okay. And if you don't want that one, you can put it on there and you can draw again. And you keep doing that until, I think, and I'm not 100% sure on this, the area that you're in is full. And then you have to take the next one. Right. But now, the next time somebody wants to use a lantern, or if I'm now resolving another lantern symbol... I can choose to take one of those instead of keep drawing okay. out the batteries. Nice little lantern. So mm. that that's the lantern rules. Anyway, we're all done. So thank you very much to you two for joining me. Thank you. And for those people in the chat, as I mentioned at the very start, if you if you missed it, this is a prototype copy of the game. The rules are still in development. There are some changes here from the copies that the other content creators were sent because I've updated some bits. So we're using some slightly different rules. I would recommend if you're playing on Tabletop Simulator um, to use the rules that we're using today because of the mod has been updated. Specifically, these two tiles are different. The old tile for this used to have a pier on this island and it was a very different game because you could sail there and go straight in. Um, there's a few other tweaks to the rules as well with certain limits, but yeah, we're using the latest rules, but they are subject to change and have faith in the developers and the designers that they are going to be streamlining the game and yeah making it more refined and, and, and better the kickstarter goes live next tuesday so if this video has piqued your interest in the game definitely check out the kickstarter and the other thing that i definitely wanted to mention as well again i said this at the start but i'll mention it again what you've seen here is how the game will be once you are a few games in i don't exactly know what will be cut out but for example i think the landmarks i don't think the landmarks would be in for your first game so these would just do something different and then maybe after your first game it says oh now unlock landmarks open an envelope these four cards are in it that kind of thing now there's certain people out there who don't like that in games they will just buy the game they will open all of the envelopes and they'll sit down with their friends and say right we're now going to play the full experience and spend an hour and a half explaining the game they want to do that, right? I don't. I like taking it step by step. Um, and also, the other thing is, this isn't all of the game. So that secret bag that I'm not allowed to show you is here. There's stuff in here that I'm not allowed to show you. Um, but it's basically more stuff. Um, it's more cards. It's more monsters. It's more cave cards. Uh, it's more things. But there are going to be some extra bits added to it. And they're working on a cooperative mode as well, a solo and a cooperative mode where there's going to be um, big monsters that roam around the map and things like that. But as I say, it's all still in development. Keep an eye out on the Kickstarter campaign page, which there is a link to in the description of this video. And that's it. We're all done. So, yeah, thank you very much to you two. Thank you very much to everybody for watching. Hope you found the video useful and we'll see you next time. Cheers all. Bye-bye.